Tonight, the A's hit the road for an 11-game trip. First stop, New York City to take on the pinstripes at beautiful Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Joe Girardi and the Yankees have a big-time veteran lineup where every spot, one through nine, can hurt you. Eric Serkamp gets the ball in game one. The tall lefty has filled in nicely for the A's rotation, but he will have a tough task with this Yankee lineup. The A's are on a roll and will look to make it three wins in a row. Athletics, Yankees, coming up next. East Coast trip starts tonight at the big stadium in the Bronx. That has to be Yankee Stadium pitching matchup tonight. The Yankees will send Michael Pineda to the mound, and he will be opposed by the left-hander Eric Surkamp for the A's. It's the first of three from Yankee Stadium on a beautiful night for baseball. The A's and Yankees coming up on CSN California. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Sir Cam makes his third start, his first two starts. He has not been able to get past the fifth inning. And, Ray, with the A's playing 16 consecutive yeah. days, that starting rotation yeah. needs to start pitching deep into games, and it really needs to start tonight. And it's a big challenge for him because he's facing the Yankees for the first time coming into the big uh, Bronx Stadium. He knows what he is dealing with. You look at his numbers, he's not pitched out of the fifth inning in his first two starts. And Kuyper, I think also he may be thinking, am I going to stay in the rotation? Because you'd never know know what's going to happen. He got the fifth spot of the rotation, but he has to pitch deep in the ball games, like you said, because the A's have this string of consecutive games. They have to get started to go deep in ball games. So you saw a quick look at Michael Pineda. Injuries have kind of slowed his career, Ray, but still very talented and only 27 years old, and he looks like he's healthy now. He throws hard, and you're going to see some sliders. And Darren Bush, the A's hitting coach, said the A's hitters have to lay off the pitch that the hitters that he faced in this ball game could not. These sliders are out of the strike zone. He's a very good pitcher. He throws hard. You have to get ready for his fastball. But when he drops the hard slider, usually out of the strike zone, hitters will swing at it. The balls are blocked by McCann usually. And unfortunately, the A's hitters cannot make contact with that hard slider. Lay off that pitch, force him to get the ball up in the zone. It's going to make it a lot better for them. All right, so the A's had the great weekend back at the Coliseum, winning two out of three from the world champion Royals. They'll try to take that momentum on the road starting tonight here at Yankee Stadium. So it's the A's and the Yankees, the first of three from New York. We'll have lineups and first pitch from the Big Apple when we come back.
box. Taste the bacon-licious sourdough bacon ranch combo. Only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Yankee Stadium. It is a nice night for baseball. Starting to cool off a little bit after a very comfortable day weather-wise here in New York City. The crowd, as you can see, is still filing in. Trust we me. hope. <laughs> we hope they are. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The boardwalk is open. Visit beachboardwalk.com for park hours. Temperature 66 degrees here at first pitch, and it is a breezy night. Flags high above are whistling just a little bit, but all in all, comfortable night for baseball, especially on the East Coast, middle of this April. Is great. So not too much to complain about weather wise tonight. And it's supposed to be nice for all three games of this series. The Yankees have taken the field, so let's look at the lineup for the Athletics. Billy Burns will lead off in center. Chris Coglin will start tonight in left field. And then in the middle of the lineup, it's Reddick, Valencia, and Volk, followed by Lowry, Davis. Chris Davis will DH, then Alonzo and Simeon. And the young man the Yankees hope can stay healthy. Michael Pineda starts tonight for the Yankees. The A saw him in Seattle. Big trade bringing him back to the Bronx. It probably worked out a little bit better maybe for New York than Seattle, but he is good. He's one and one on the season. Third start for the young right hander. But if he stays healthy, he's got a chance to do something great, especially pitching for the Yankees. So Pineda takes the hill defensively behind the big right hander. The Yankees will have Gardner. Hicks and Carlos Beltran in the outfield. Headley, Gregorius, Castro, and Teixeira on the infield. And Brian McCann is your catcher. So, as Pineda finishes up his warm up tosses, the A's set to open up this 10 game road trip. It'll be three in New York, three in Toronto, and then four in Detroit. We talked about it. In the pregame show, Ray, it's a challenge trip early in the season for the A's. Yeah, very challenging. I think anytime you come to New York and face the Yankees in their home park, it's just something about the atmosphere. You have to get over that. And for a young player or pitcher, in the case of Sir Camp tonight, first ever time, you just hope that he got settled in down on the bullpen before he takes the mound. But it's always a challenge starting here, but maybe with this nice weather, it could be very beneficial for the athletics and starting with Billy Burns and try to make something happen. Burns 281 on the season. He's got nine hits and 32 at bats. He has scored five runs and he swings at the first pitch and drives it toward right. But Beltran back pedals a little bit and he's got it one out. So not only just the start of a 10 game road trip but the A's will play 19 of their next 25 games on the road and all those road games obviously in the Eastern time zone. How about that? That, that is hard to believe, but I, I think it's a plus because the A's traveling from west to east. They do it twice and then they're finished in the middle part of May and you saw that just six games remaining in the Eastern time zone and of course one of those is Cleveland. Or three of those games will be in Cleveland, but uh, no, I, I think it could be a plus for the A's especially to get out of the East early. So Cincinnati, after, thank you. Yeah. After this you go home. For six, but then you go to Baltimore, Boston, and St. Pete to play the race. So that's that 25 game stretch. But I, I agree, you, you get through it and hopefully you play well, but then you are done. And, and I think the biggest challenge, granted, playing some good teams, but when you change time zones and the trips that the A's have to make, and the letter just reminded me, Cincinnati is the other three yeah, teams in the right. Eastern time zone, so the two Ohio teams. But other than that, You've got teams from the Midwest West sure. and two, two hour time change is the maximum after that. So let's hope that's a real positive for the club. Mickey's going to love it. Mickey yeah. Morbido, the A's director of team travel. He's come in with a six and seven record and of course just the three road games so far and that was the three game sweep up in Seattle. One two pitch strike three call to Chris Cotton. So two quick outs here in the first inning. Burns on a fly out, Coglin on a strikeout. But he's got a good change up. We talked about the hard slider, and he pulls the string on this one, kind of floats away. Is McCann on the outside corner, catching it perfectly, and a perfect pitch by Pineda. And on the one two, had a pitch that he could waste, and it went with it, caught the corner. Here's Reddick.
Lots of sliders for yeah. Marco Pineda, and it is a good one. One thing he throws so hard that you try to adjust off his fastball, but if you don't pick up the spin, you're going to swing at a bad pitch. He's a big fella, six foot seven, 260 pounds from the Dominican Republic. Michael Pineda, still a youngster, 27 years old, so he still has a bright future ahead of him if he can stay healthy. You know, maybe that slider was so good because he used pine tar. Well, <laughs> he got caught with pine tar on his neck. That didn't work out well for him, but sometimes the pitchers want to get a little better grip and go to the old pine tar the hitters use. You know, some pitchers say, wait a minute, the hitters can use it to help their grip. Yeah. Why can't I use it? There's a big difference. So Reddick has the walk, and here comes Valencia. Pineda finally stayed healthy last year. He went 12 and 10 with a 4.37 ERA, and the Yankees were thrilled just to have him out there for 27 starts. As he faces his cleanup hitter Valencia. Valencia hitting 273 with a couple of RBIs. I think the Mariners with the trade getting Jesus Montero, I think they thought they were getting a star in the future, but he has not panned out for them. Well, it was just one of those trades it, at the time, two young players. It was yeah. very interesting because you were getting a position player with a lot of promise mm -hmm. for a starting pitcher with a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. It turned out Jesus Montero, a huge disappointment. Yeah. Not even catching. No. That was Larry Rothschild, the pitching coach for Joe Girardi, and he's been around Girardi. He's been a manager in the big leagues, a pitching coach, and a very, very good one. There's yeah. four pitch walk in his career. <laughs> wow. He does have pretty good control for what is a, a hard thrower, yeah. kind of a strikeout guy. He really is the type of pitcher, I think, with his slider, if you just go up and take all the time. You might not get a pitch to hit, no. but you'll walk. But the slider looks so good. And I think also, you know, this is a new stadium. You guys talked about it on the, the pregame, but the old stadium across the way. You think about the history. And I think when a team comes in to play the Yankees, while they'll play 81 home games, you come in here and you go, wow, this is Yankee Stadium. And over there, you can think of Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig and all yeah. the greats that played there. This is different because it's new. But still, the, the are the history of the Yankees. 27 world champions and just all the greatness. And then all of a sudden, three games, you're gone. So you have to think about it before you get here and forget about it while you're playing here. And retired numbers and Monument Park. Oh, two pitch. There's that slider. Yeah. This ballpark has been, this is the eighth year already yeah, of this ballpark. I, I will have to say this, Ray. The amount of empty seats is alarming. It is surprising. Wow. It's very surprising. I agree with you. Man, look at that. They didn't build this to have that many empty <laughs> seats. No, they did not. <laughs> they did not. But you know, the Yankees did not sign a free agent in the offseason, which is shocking for a team that still has a payroll over a couple of hundred million dollars. And, you know, they, they make a lot of money. But for them not to sign one free agent, they made the trade for Chapman. But Joe Girardi, great manager, but he's dealing with basically the hand that's given to him. That one rolled foul. Yeah, still a payroll of 222 million, which is yeah. is is actually first in Major League Baseball. It's just a shade ahead of the Dodgers yeah. now. But but for that payroll to be there without signing a free agent, I mean, not even like like a we're not talking about a big money free agent, any free agent at, at all. all, zero. And how, when was the last time that happened with the Yankees? Probably never. I don't think ever. You know, they show the picture of the, the late George Steinberg, the boss, but he was going to sign somebody just to just say he signed somebody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and knowing that basically he could outbid anybody because he, he, this is, you know, really it's a bank. It's like printing money here. And maybe, maybe it's a, a slight change in philosophy for the Yankees. Maybe yeah, there's family. Yeah. Saying, Let's not do that anymore. It doesn't guarantee anything. Yeah. Two and two to Valencia trying to get aboard. Reddick with the two out walk. He reaches for that one and drives it to center. It's hit pretty well with some carry, but Hicks backpedaling and now over 
into deep right center field, and he makes the catch side retired. Runner stranded, A's do not score in the top of the first. Eric Surkamp, no score, bottom of the first. Lineup. Brett Gardner, Starlin Castro, second baseman, then Beltran to Shira Rodriguez. I'm going to tell you how many combined home runs those three guys have in just a second. McCann, Hicks, Headley, and Gregorius, that's your Yankee starting lineup. And it is Eric Surkamp, his third start. He faced the Mariners, and he's faced the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, and the record of 0 1, no decision up in Seattle, but for him, I think of Barry Zito when he faced the Yankees and playoffs back in the early 2000s at the old stadium. You just get in the park, sit in the dugout, go in the monument, get it out of your system, take the mound, and realize you're a major league pitcher pitching against a lineup of New York Yankees in the traditional pinstripes and forget about everything else. But he's good enough with a good breaking ball and a sneaky fastball. See how he utilizes it tonight. Gardner shows butt, takes a strike. Gardner off to a decent start, 314, good on base percentage. Got a double and a homer, a couple of stolen bases, seven walks on the year. Pops this one up. Simeon, Valencia, and it's going to be Valencia who makes the catch. And you can see there is oh, a lot of a pretty good breeze <laughs> up there. Defensively for the A's, the outfield has Chris Coglin making his second start in left field this year. Then Billy Burns in center, Reddick in right. Valencia, Simeon, Lowry, and Alonzo on the infield third to first. Stephen Vogt is behind the plate. And just a reminder, every time a hitter comes to play, don't not do not look for a single digit number. Because <laughs> they're all gone. The last one to be retired, number two, Derek Jeter, will be done sometime soon. See the number eight on the sleeve of all the Yankees yeah. players. That is in memory of, of course, Yogi Berra, who yeah. unfortunately passed away this past offseason. It's been twice, twice, exactly. Right. Was it Bill Dickey's the other guy? Yeah. Yep. It's funny that couple of catchers. so many <laughs> Yankee greats that people just adore, but I don't think, I mean, when you say eh, most beloved Yankee, Yogi could be at the top of that list. Exactly. And granted, it's just it's nothing more than a talking point, but he may not have been their greatest player. He was terrific, but he may be the yeah. most popular. I don't know that he had enough fingers to put all his rings on exactly. because he won so many, but uh, plus his personality. Oh, it was great. The Yogiisms. I mean, you write a book about Yogiisms. And but but I think also kind of to, to your point that when current players, when he passed away, the current players actually said it's sad that I can never call him again. And talk to him. Well, and that's you know, all part of kind of what exactly, I'm talking about. Exactly. Exactly. There's right. so much more to Yogi, I think, than just you know how many home runs he hit in his career and that type of thing. A line drive. Valencia grabs it, and that is 
the second out. The retired numbers for the Yankees, it's a long, yeah. long list, folks. And as Ray said, you better get a number now. <laughs> number two is going to go to Jeter. Yeah. Joe Torrey's number six recently retired. Thurman Munson, Don Mattingly, not long ago. Mariana Rivera, Jackson, Guidry. And you saw Jackie Robinson, and it was Mariano who last to wear 42. Beltran finds the gap in deep left center field. Rolls all the way to the 399 marker. So Carlos Beltran doesn't wait around. He has a two out double. And not surprising him jump on the first pitch and thought, why not? Fastball, maybe a little cutter that he throws, brought it right in the middle of the plate. And Beltran, not one to wait around. He's been around baseball a long time, both the American and National League. And he is now, you know, these guys all say they want to continue to play and especially got the plate. He said, I got five more years in me. Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, sure. Mark Teixeira, the way he has kept himself in great shape, wouldn't be surprised to see him play into his 40s. Well, we mentioned his career numbers. So Beltran third, hitting third, Teixeira hitting fourth, Alex Rodriguez hitting fifth. Those three guys in the middle of the Yankees lineup have hit a combined 1,481 <laughs> home runs. <laughs> You'd have to look long and hard in the history of baseball for a lineup back to back to back with those with guys that have hit over nearly 1,500 career home runs. And pick your poison right in the middle now. You've got A Rod in the on deck, although he's struggling a little bit, but you know, to share it, he's going to swing 3 0. I mean, you're, you get to 3 0, be careful. Because I don't even know if he looks at the third base coach. There's your umpires. Laz Diaz is calling balls and strikes. That's your crew chief, Jeff Nelson, who is at second base. So three and one now to Teixeira. Teixeira has three home runs on the season. Got eight hits and 37 at bats. Big swing. Just got a piece of it. But to share has talked about watching his diet and of course eating correctly. You look at him, he is thinner, much thinner. And it's that cut fastball right towards the middle and just hit it straight back. But whatever he is doing, and maybe figuring his age that uh, he's mid 30s, that he wants to play longer and he's going to take better care of himself diet wise, and it's really showing. And he takes high. So two on two out here comes Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez has been struggling this year. He did homer on Sunday. And it did not take long to get out. It was against Iwakuma. And a fastball in a part of the plate. Joe Girardi had moved him down in the batting order and actually had given him a little bit of advice. And the advice simply said, don't feel for the ball, let it go. He let it go and He's approaching 700. He's got four hits and 34 at bats this year. Hey, he had been hitting third. Yeah. But then Girardi dropped into sixth on Sunday and hit a home run. Today in the fifth spot. So a couple of home runs on the year for Alex Rodriguez and in his career 689. So he is 25 away from tying Babe Ruth so he certainly have a, has a very good chance of getting to Babe Ruth this year hit 33 last year and of course he said he's going to retire after next year after his contract expires so you do the math you see where Barry Bonds is he would be just shy of him if he averaged yeah. 33 the next two Yeah, he's 66 away from tying Hank Aaron right, right now right so he could could get to there. He's not going to get to Bonds. There's a shot to left, and that's a hit. Beltran, who still runs pretty well, comes digging around third. He's going to score. And a two out rally. It's the Yankees, a 1 0 lead as Alex Rodriguez drives in his fifth run. And you're going to see where they tried to pitch him on the OR 2 0 fastball. And 
Stephen Volt moves inside. It does not get in there. It's right down the middle of the plate. And you could say almost you're fortunate that it's just a base hit. And you talk about shifts and how they'll shift to have a power hitter take the base hit. That could have very easily been a three run home run considering the location of the fastball. But the one thing power hitters do when they get a count in their favor, you see that the leg lift, they'll look fastball and they will be very aggressive. And Alex Rodriguez, one of the best at doing that. And here's McCann. It's the RBI total now for Alex Rodriguez. And we've seen Rodriguez in his career, and he's very much like a lot of power hitters, Ray. He doesn't really like the ball inside, no. but if it stays out over the plate, just like, I mean, look where that pitch yeah. is. That's right where he wants it, especially later in his career, where exactly. maybe the bat speed isn't quite the same. You can get those guys out if you get it in on them, yeah. even if you don't have huge velocity, yeah. but Sir Camp. Not great velocity, and then it's right out over the plate. Uh, when you see a catcher move from one target to down the middle, you know you're in trouble, especially in the middle part of a lineup that's very powerful. Shift is on for McCann. And now the count is 3 0 oh with Aaron Hicks, a switch hitter, in the on deck circle. And Simeon to the right of second base. Outfield slightly shifted toward right as well. Well, with McCann, very happy to play at Yankee Stadium after being with the Braves and playing well, signed a free agent contract. They signed him because he's a left handed hitter and he hits over the shift. He doesn't try to hit through it, he wants to go into the seats, the short porch, and right field. As Diaz just did something. I don't know. He looked at Sir Camp, maybe trying to get time. And McCann hooks that one foul. So what you're saying about somebody like McCann, who's always been a very good hitter, in Atlanta, the ballpark there was always seemed like a, a, a big park. He's probably become more of a dead pull. That's right. Not completely, but maybe looks to pull even more. Remember when Giambi came back the A's? Thought, wow, he's going to hit home runs to left field. He had changed his swing yeah. so much to for here sure. that when he came back to the A's, he could not adjust the back right. to left field. This one is foul. That was a ball four pitch. Unfortunately, he swung at it and fouled it. You remember Oscar Gamble? <laughs> This part would be, there may not be a more perfect hitter for this yeah. or for old Yankee Stadium than this Oscar Gale. Yeah, he'd take the left foot and he'd be open so much and dare you to try to pitch him anywhere. He's going to hook it and pull it. <laughs> Runners go, and this one is popped up just below us. Oscar Gamble started his career here, right, with the Yankees. So. And that was before they had ear flaps. So when he had his hair, which is so big, looked like a beanie sticking on oh, top yeah. of his head. Maybe the best afro of all <laughs> That's time, right. Oscar Gamble. <laughs> and up and in, and McCann swings through it. So when it's all said and done, the Yankees get a run on two hits and a walk. Second inning coming up, Yankees one, he's nothing.
Time now for the Nissan keys to the game. Of course, what the A's did over the weekend, you're taking on the world champions. You try to build on that. The A's won two of the three against the world champs over the weekend. And as we've talked about with the East Coast time zone road games, the A's have a bunch in the next month or so and uh, try to start off on the right foot in this series against the Yankees in New York. And Bob Melvin, who along with his bench coach, Mark Kotze, they're all prepared. They know what these guys are going to do. It's just a matter of executing and trying to stay close enough and win a game with good pitching. First pitch to vote is a fastball right there. First strike from Pineda. Pineda had a walk and a strikeout in the first inning. Vote on the year 282, a couple of home runs. 11 hits and 39 at bats. He also has a couple of doubles. Now, Cap, you talked about the control that Pineda has, and that could be beneficial to a hitter knowing that he's going to be around the strike zone. And plus, if the A's hitters can lay off the slider, which is normally out of the strike zone, he probably gets a lot of swing and misses on a pitch that's not even a strike. Like that. McCann will have his work cut out for him tonight, blocking those, especially with two strikes or runners on base. But here's a hard slider. If you can lay off that pitch, if you can recognize the spin, I would say a greater percentage of the time it's going to be out of the strike zone, but you swing and miss, or swing over the pitch. Hang in there, Brian McCann. <laughs> <laughs> when you see a catcher turn the mitt sideways, backhand turns his head, said, so I got no chance. That's bouncing too far out in front. Hit high in the air foul. I'm surprised that sometimes catchers, if there's nobody on base, not two strikes. Just to, you know what? I'm not blocking that. That's right. Just get it's, out of the way. It's just going to let it go. I, I, I'm not going to get hurt. And that's why it's important to know our two strikes are runners on base. You have to really try to make an effort. But uh, unfortunately for McCann, the two that he tried to at least get in front of were 0 2 pitches. Somehow Stephen Vogt broke his bat on that last swing. Did not sound like a fractured bat, but I guess it was. Hit that one hard, but foul. Count stays two and two. Well, Brian McCann will do with the slider by Pineda. He knows that's going to be his out pitch and a, and a successful pitch as the game progresses, but he will try to incorporate it into his pitching as much as possible. He also has a changeup he can call, but the slider will be used effectively. Back there. There it is. <laughs> Second strikeout for Michael Pineda. I see Voter took those 0 and 2 and they were out of the strike zone. Check where this one is. And it's also out of the strike zone. But after a couple of fastballs, and looked like Steven might have been trying to gear off the fastball, could not adjust enough to foul off the pitch. One out for Jed Lowry. Lowry hitting 227, no home runs at eight RBIs. He had a pinch hit RBI single on Sunday, and it was a big hit. Picking up his eighth RBI. A 3 2 curveball on a pitch that I asked him, I said, Would you look in curveball? And he said, You can't look curveball, the guy throws 98. And that's what Herrera does and tried to paint it. And he just adjusted off the curveball, which he did a good job. And, but it almost looked like he was looking for the curveball, but Instead, he's saying, I'm going to get a fastball, and there's the curveball and make the adjustment. Got it in right field and able to score the tying run. And a big win for the A's, winning it late. Outside corner, two and two. Chris Davis to follow here in the second inning. Ball at 93 miles an hour. A base hit to left field. And Lowry had a fastball up and away and drops it into left. 
Yeah, Larry's a very good hitter, and the A's saw it last year when he's playing for the Astros. So many big hits against the A's. A lot of times with two strikes doing that, taking the fastball away, going to the opposite field. He's a doubles machine. He likes to drive the ball in the gaps for doubles. Occasionally hit the home runs, but he protects well, especially with a couple of strikes on him. Here's Davis, who is DHing tonight. Slow start for Davis. Six hits and 37 at bats, and he swings and misses. You know, one of the things about baseball and so much. So much scouting and analytics that if you can't handle a certain pitch, you're going to see that pitch consistently because of the videos and scouting reports and what Chris Davis is seeing a lot of fastballs towards the outside part of the plate. And that was one that Pineda made a mistake and left it in the middle, but Chris couldn't handle it. Highest whiff percentage in the majors. And now you have to be concerned about the hard slider because a right hander seeing a slider from Pineda. He can start it towards the middle of the outside part of the plate and break it away if he decides to go with the slider. Wow. Drives this one towards shallow right center. But Hicks, very good center fielder, gets over there to make the catch. Boy, that's two mistakes that Pineda made that Davis could not take advantage of. Him. Oh, and two. McCann set up outside and didn't even think about letting him chase a pitch. Left it right in the middle of the plate. He took something off of it, tried to get it out, but left it in the middle. And Chris Davis is swinging the bat well. That's a home run. Yeah. Right now, he's not, unfortunately. Two outs for Yonder Alonso. Outside corner strike to Alonso. Alonzo five hits 39 at bats. One of those hits a double and a couple of RBIs. He was two for ten in that series against Kansas City. And now it's 0 2. So Alonzo trying to get going. Gia has got a piece of that one. 87 mile an hour pitch from Pineda. No stride, just trying to protect it. The ball twice. I guess the subway's backed up, so people still aren't here yet. So. Yeah, they're tailgating. <laughs> <laughs> This is one one stadium. I don't think tailgating is a part of what the fans no, you don't do. Think so? it's not <laughs> Miller Park in Milwaukee. <laughs> or you smell the brats coming in off the freeway. Uh. <laughs> can steps outside oh. and the ball is bounced fair down the third baseline <laughs> and in the left field. <laughs> Alonzo will take it. So runners at first and second two outs. You know, I think McCann moved so far off the plate. He wanted a waste pitch. Look where he set up. So Alonzo goes with a pitch out of the strike zone. But look at the shift. They're playing him so far to pull. And he's just happy to get a base hit to left field, especially to beat the shift the way he did. Here's Simeon. 237, four home runs, six RBIs. Alonzo protecting this time a slight stride of the pitch way up and out of the strike zone, but hit on top of a pitch that was high and found the hole. Two and zero. Oh.
Simeon was one for nine in that series over the weekend against the Royals. Lowry at second, Alonzo at first, and another pitch that misses, so it's 3 and 0. And no shift for Simeon except second base. Castro a little bit towards second. Outfield straight up. Left side of the infield straight up. And the 3 0 pitch is ripped in the left for a base hit. And this game is going to be tied. Lowry comes in to score. Alonzo to third. So Marcus Simeon. Goes after the 3 0 pitch and he has tied the game. Well, what a thing of beauty. The A's have been given the green light several of the hitters, and Marcus Simeon with a fastball down the middle had to be a shock to McCann, to Pineda, all the Yankees. But Marcus Simeon, that is as good a swing you're going to see on 3 0. Hooks it down the line, which allowed the runner to score, and also Alonzo to get to third base with Gardner getting the ball back into second base. So he's one of your hottest hitters. Very controlled swing on 3 and 0 oh, and took advantage of it. Very, very controlled swing. He's hit four home runs and he is starting to swing the bat. None bigger than that one. So the Yankees scored theirs with two outs and the A's come right back to tie it with a two out base hit. So three hits in the inning and now Billy Burns. Larry Rothschild look at that. that Look of like that wasn't in the scouting. Nope. Report. Marcus Simeon's going to have the green light three and zero. Oh. Burns hit a fly ball to right field on the first pitch. He chops this one toward first to share it, grabs it, hustles to the bag side, retired a run on three hits for the A's. Marcus Simeon with the two out RBI single. Bottom of the second coming up. It's a one one game. Another good promotion coming up. You can celebrate the A's iconic elephant logo and your everyone's favorite mascot. And we know who that is, Stomper, with your very own elephant socks presented by Black Bear Diner. At the A's second Little League Day on Sunday, May the 1st, you can be one of 15,000 fans to receive a pair of elephant socks. For tickets and more information, visit athletics.com slash promotions or call 877-493-BALL. Striped socks, elephant socks. Wow, oh, good look good in those. That's a really throwback there, isn't it? That's a really old jersey. He's wearing it proud, though. See it? Yeah, that, that's a way back. I, I don't remember seeing it. I don't even know if that was a Charlie uniform. Maybe just a giveaway. Yeah. Charlie have giveaways? <laughs> 
He didn't give away that tickets. Would have, that would have cost money, though, right? Yeah. You need a sponsor for these giveaways. <laughs> Aaron Hicks, center fielder. Playing in place of Jacoby Ellsbury tonight. Ellsbury's been struggling some, so Hicks coming over in a trade offseason from the Minnesota Twins. Pop up right over the backstop. You go back to last inning when McCann was up and really helped Sir Ken. He had a chance to walk him three different times. Three pitches, the last three that McCann swung at. So he's got to take that, especially with his club tying the game in the top half of the inning and come back and have a quick one, two, three in this bottom part of the batting order of the Yankees. Take advantage of opportunities that are given to you, and Sir Campus had that within just a couple of batters. Aaron Bush, Kurt Young, hitting coach, pitching coach. Almost hit up three and two count. Chase Headley to follow, and then Didi Gregorius, the bottom three in the Yankees lineup. Yankees are five and six on the season. If you see how the Yankees hitters, when they get a favorable count, you can see how that left leg goes up. The right-handed hitters, and they are, they're not being held back at all. They're not, especially with two strikes. McCann, we saw Hicks doing it on three and two, and they're expecting to get fastballs and expect to lift that leg and let it go. In the air, right center, and Reddick has it. One out for Chase Headley. Yankees are three and three at home. They had yesterday off just like the A's did. They lost two out of three to Seattle over the weekend. This is the middle series of a nine game homestand for New York. They will host the Rays this weekend. So they're spending some time at home. Another struggling Yankee 154 yeah. average for Chase Headley. And maybe that's why we're seeing the hitters. Swinging the way they are Hicks was 083 in his at bat. And sometimes when in doubt try to see the ball and. Be aggressive. On Cockrell the hitting coach. Yankee scored seven runs in that three game series against the Mariners and. They were one for 35 with runners in scoring position in the series. Hard to believe. So they're struggling group. They started out pretty well scoring runs, but have slowed down recently. I think when it's all said and done, offensively they will score plenty of runs. Hmm. But the A's hope that their little slump they're going through continues a couple more days. Shallow center and Burns has it. Lowry was playing the shift, so he hustled back there. Well, Billy Burns has enough speed. He loves to play at Yankee Stadium. He's got good numbers against the Yankees. And he can patrol this very large center field area. One of the biggest in all, at least American League, 399 left center, 385 to right center, and every place in between, man, it's that's why Joe DiMaggio always was held back with his home runs because the old park was the same distance, left field, left center. Plenty of room that way. Coglin has it. Gregorius is retired. Good inning for Eric Sirkan. Third inning coming up. It's a 1 1 game. It's a game.
choice on Sunday. Billy Burns, eighth inning, tie game. He triples, leading things off. Huge hit in that game. A couple of batters later, Josh Reddick would step up. Interesting strategy with one out. A lot of us thought that they would walk Reddick and pitch to Valencia. That was not the case. And Reddick <laughs> drove him in. And when I say some of us, that included Josh Reddick. I asked Josh oh, yeah. after the game, did you think they were going to walk you? And he said, yeah, I was convinced they were going to walk me, and they didn't. Not that nothing against Danny Valencia. It's just you bring the double play into order, and it's a 2-2 game. It's called common sense. I mean, Josh Reddick, one of the hottest hitters on the team. And you're going to pitch around. You're going to throw him a 3-1 changeup like you're going to fool him. Bounce it if you really want to fool him. You know what they say, right? If you <laughs> j just put him on. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, it, the Thank whole, you. well, we're going to pitch carefully. Maybe he'll chase. I think that's dangerous. As Coughlin goes the other way, and he's got a base hit. You know, it's one thing if you can pitch carefully. If you have in your mind that I'm going to walk him, so I'm not going to give him anything to hit, like this fastball, Coughlin waits back and goes against the shift a little bit because Hadley way off the line at third and it's past him in the left field. But I just don't think there are as many pitchers who have a frame of mind. It's, it's always I want to get the guy out instead of just here. Here's four fingers. You know yeah. put him on. Here's Reddick. Saw something this weekend too Ray and, and we did the Angels series. Remember how much we talked about how often the Angels shifted? Yeah. I mean, they shifted, well, 80% of the time, exactly. I might guess. Right? They, they shift more than anybody yeah. in baseball. And, and yeah. at times it cost them a little bit, but just the, the, the point is, is they shifted a lot. Mm -hmm. The Royals come to town, and it was noticeable four innings into game one of the series, yeah. they were shifting hardly at all. Straight up, yeah. And it's amazing that against the same team the A's the difference in yeah. how two teams go about That's it. right and it has to be it has to just be a, the philosophy because the charts that everybody's looking at are the same, same. yeah all the information is so exactly. it, yeah. it's just one team saying we're yeah. going with it other team saying not so much but to me the key and I know you've talked about it can the pitcher pitch to the shift yeah. I mean, Alonzo, you play him to hit the ball to right field, you give him a fastball away. <laughs> and you got two strikes on With it. With two strikes. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, you, I, I think the situations dictate what you're going to do. And with Jed Lowry, I go back to him in Seattle when they put the shift on with two outs. And the whole left side of the infield was open, and he hit two balls to drive in runs. Reddick hits one in the air. But room for Hicks. Coughlin tags, bluffs, and stays at first. So Reddick had a good swing at it. Just hit it to the wrong part of the ballpark. Hicks grabs it. If you pitch in this park with a left-handed hitter, and you can hit, have a hitter who wants to pull the ball into the seats in short porch and right field, do that, you're going to have a lot of success. And there have been a lot of successful pitchers in this park that do that. Look at the monster in center field, the, the area, the space in there. And to hit one straight away, it, it's very difficult to do. From left center to right center, if you try to go in those distances, you're going to make outs because they're typically going to have outfielders who can cover the ground. You go down the lines, you're going to pull, you're going to hit home runs. Yeah, it's really from bullpen to bullpen. Yeah, exactly. Is where the field is big. Yeah. Down the lines, not so much. And if you have a hitter that you know is trying to pull, you pitch him away and he still tries to pull, he's going to hit really a can of corn to center field as ready to. Want to know to Valencia. Once he hits one high and foul. And in that, what makes right field here really so short is, okay, the distance down the line is what, 314? Okay, that's yeah. short, but that, that's not what makes it. It's the fact that from the foul pole to the bullpen, it doesn't angle back very far. That's right. Yeah. Some ballparks, it angles back quite a bit or you know, circles around a little bit. This one, it's pretty straight across. It just doesn't angle back. Is a shot just foul, so it never really gets deep exactly. until you just get way out by yeah. the bullpen. And playing right field here is like playing left field at Fenway Park with the monster. Mm -hmm. 
you know, why play deep? Ball's over your head, it's a home run, and Beltron not playing that deep anyway. But you know, you also have the short fence, yep. which, which makes it inviting. So you can hit line drive, it could go over the wall. Valencia misses that slider. That's a tough pitch. Especially if you're behind in the count. So three strikeouts now for Pineda. I think every right handed hitter should be surprised if he doesn't get this pitch for two strikes. The hard slider and try to recognize it. And, and again, it's going to be out of the strike zone. And Darren Bush, the A's hitting coach, has talked to the players. They had their meeting, they've had scouting reports. Bushy yesterday in the off day spent his day. Look at it video of the Yankees pitchers Pineda and the rest of the staff. So he could tell the A's hitters exactly what to expect and they're seeing exactly what he told them. Two outs for vote. Coughlin still at first after leading off this inning with a base hit. Struck out swinging in the second. Taps this one. It's a fair ball. McCann to first. Got him. So the leadoff single from Coglin. The A's do nothing with it. Bottom of the third coming up. It'll be Gardner, Castro, and Beltran for the Yankees. We're tied at one. Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by AAA. What does your insurance do when it's not doing insurance? It should do more. Go to AAA.com for details. Just outside Yankee Stadium. That was. Folks were playing on the field. I think that's where the old ballpark. Mm -hmm. They built a nice field where the old Yankee Stadium was located. Yeah, it was a great look at the new ballpark. The address 1 East 161st Street in the Bronx. Or as they like to say, the big stadium in the Bronx. <laughs> Although right. I think they said that about the old ballpark. That's See, that's where that's where the old yeah. ballpark was. That's right. That's great. It's like a AstroTurf field. Yeah. Right? They could care less about the Yankees <laughs> play, playing in this big ballpark tonight. They've got their own game that's going right. on. How about when we go out and catch the bus about midnight and look over and they're playing basketball the they're, lights are oh, on yeah. all the time in that area but next to the old stadium big time and there's people waiting to play too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and those lights would burn all night and they would play basketball all night. Gardner lines one right center Reddick's got to get over there to cut it off Gardner will try for two here comes Reddick's throw it's a good one but it's late. No hesitation from Gardner. If he did, he would have been out. Reddick made a nice throw. 
uh, surprisingly the play as close as it was considering the distance that Reddick had to go get the ball. But you're right if Gardner is not thinking too, he will not be able to get in safely and watch also Jeff Nelson the second base umpire does not make the call until Gardner has securely wrapped his arm around the bag because he slides 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 Nelson waits he gets in safely but he's waiting for the tag because Marcus Simeon is keeping the tag on it. Great throw by Reddick that's his great outfield arm. Here's Castro. Castro popped it up. A first pitch changeup he went after. Alonzo has it. Kaipi tried to pull. You can see the hips open. And really, a runner at second, nobody out. He should have been thinking about right field, but it looked like he was thinking pull all the way. And it was enough as watch the hips open and then reached. And when he reached, the ball went straight up. And that is a great pitch and a huge out. Luis Soho, row number 14, as well as Lou Pinella. Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou. So Gardner still at second. There's Beltran. Lowry keeping him very close. Gardner is a very good base runner and a very good base stealer, and he'll go. Runners in scoring position this season. A's are hitting 214. Yankees are hitting 210. And surprisingly, for a team that has been known to hit a lot of home runs. The Yankees lead the American League in stolen bases, which is a shock. That's right. 13 for 15. And the real surprise that Chase Headley, Headley, the third baseman, didn't steal a base all last year. He already what, has three, three or four, something like that. So it's a different type of Yankees club. One that with a short porch in right field, they'd sit back and wait for the big home run, but now they try to do a little bit differently on the base pass. One and one the count to Carlos Beltran who doubled and scored in the first. Yankees have 14 home runs. Through their first 11 games this is game number 12 for them. Good swing there fouled it straight back. And with those numbers that were shown about the. Hits with runners in score position the batting average. You can see some of the Yankees hitters who run in score position trying to do a little bit more. In the case of Beltron, who put a nice swing on a first pitch in his first at bat for a double, scored the Yankees' first run. Pitched a little bit differently now, but he went out of the strike zone to try to drive in the run. Good hitters will do that. He flips this one toward right. Reddick comes in. That's two big outs. And one more to get yeah. with Mark Teixeira stuff. Another off speed pitch and curveball, and you get a hitter with the power of Beltron to just flip the bat like that with the runner at second. Teixeira walked in the first inning. Pitch is high. Huge hole on the right side. With Lowry playing right around second base. Alonzo is slid over quite a bit. Trying to take away that hole, but it is a big gap to shoot for. I don't know that it's something that Teixeira wants to do, but maybe with runner right. scoring position, he may cut down his swing a little bit. He's a better hitter left handed and you cannot take anything away from his right handed stroke but throughout his career left handed has always been a huge plus for him. And he went around one and two. If you think back the year that he won the home run hitting championship the title in Comerica Park. No that was uh, Abreu but he. Participated. He had not hit a home run from the right side until he went back to Comerica and went out to right center. So, <laughs> from from right center standpoint, he, he may think about that. Strike three, Strike yeah. three yeah. call, and I think he called it on the yeah. pitch. It looked yeah. like Teixeira was able to hold up his swing. Doesn't matter. Strike three called. So nice job by Eric Surkamp. Gardner with the leadoff double, and he never moves from second base.
Oh, uh -huh. Hayes are introducing uh -huh. all new group cap days for uh -huh. the 2016 season. Purchase a group of 25 or more on the field level on select games, and everyone, I mean everyone in your group, will receive a quality snapback A's cap. You can book your group cap day outing by calling 510-638-GO-A's or by visiting athletics.com slash cap. Oh, you can't come out to a park and yawn, man. You've, you've got to put a hay stuff on. And that Noah Syndergaard? Yeah. Thought he was pitching <laughs> for the Mets. <laughs> That's a good Thor. <laughs> they called Thor. You know what's great about A's colors, though, is like when you're in opposing ballparks, they stand oh, out. Oh, they do. You can see they? the green and gold. Yeah. And they stand out. And especially at the traditional Yankee pinstripes. Exactly. You know, here you get all the, the jerseys and the caps of the Yankees. But I mean, as we sit That's up right. here in a oh, yeah. lovely is. spot, you could look around and you could see green and gold. So Charlie Finley does live. I mean, it's right. the, the colors of the late Charlie Finley, he brought all those out, very prominent. And there they are. Wow, good call, Kai. To pitch inside. Remember, we went to City Field a couple years ago and we had the fans below us. That's right. With the A's fans. Reggie Jackson, Jersey. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Big fella had a Reggie Jackson jersey. <laughs> yeah. One and two to Lowry, who singled and scored in the second inning. Good swing, fouls a straight back. All right, we'll give him that one. At least he's got the colors. Oregon Ducks, but it's green and gold, so that's okay. See, I thought they were A's fans. I didn't even see the O. That's all right. I just, just saw, saw the green, you know? And they got the legends, so they're dropping some coin tonight. Yeah, they're down. Down below. Good food down there, from what I'm told. I've been told there's some great food down there as yeah. well, Kipe, so And it, it doesn't cost anything. Either. No, you just pay. Just tax on your ticket. You $2,500 <laughs> for a seat, and you get all you can eat. And you better eat a lot. There's a. A restaurant right behind there and it is gorgeous and if you're hungry you just walk back there and get food or they bring it to you shot to right right at Beltran one out here in the top of the fourth wow. see you want lobster they got lobster and then those are I told you it's the real deal though. that is great and padded seats got the beverage got all kinds of beverages See that's the problem though those people probably got here at 705 but they're just now getting to their seats because you got so much to choose from down underneath there. and they're probably saying why are those people yeah. out on that field <laughs> we're coming to have a nice dinner yeah. and there's people out on our field you want us to sit outside <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Thought I could just eat inside <laughs> it's cooling off a little bit at yeah. this ballpark. It is a beautiful place, yeah. but I, I know we, we noticed it early on. It's been open now, as I said, this is the eighth season. It opened in 2009, and I think he's won the World Series that year. It's a beautiful facility, but it does not have the atmosphere that the old ballpark had, and I'm not sure that you, you could in whatever stadium you built, and it looks very much like the old one, but the old one, I, I don't know, the, 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 the crowd, was into it more and it was louder and it, it, the place would literally shake. And I've never got the feeling in this ball, but it, it's not as intimidating, I don't think, for an opposing player. And you notice how the stands kind of go up the, the lower level and the second level at the old Yankee Stadium, it went straight up. Straight and then it felt like they were right on top of it. Chris Davis strikes out. Four strikeouts now for Pineda. Just staying with the fastballs, and Chris Davis not able to catch up to the good fastball from Pineda. Opening up just enough. But you know, the playing field, the dimensions, everything, but down in the first and second level, it just seems like they go back so far. And it's just not as uh, intimate, I guess you could say, as the old place. But the old place, while it was great, they didn't have a lot of the amenities they have yeah. here. Yeah, that's a nice inning for Michael Pineda. Quickly done with the strikeout. Bottom of the fourth coming up. Alex Rodriguez will lead things off.
after last night's overtime loss in game three. The Sharks will look to rebound tomorrow in game four as they take on the Kings in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. The Sharks lead that series two games to one. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. with Sharks pregame live. Don't miss a moment on the home of the authentic Sharks fan, CSN California. So that game will be at the Shark Tank. There's your schedule. Game four tomorrow, game five on Friday. Back in Los Angeles is Alex Rodriguez. Goes after the first pitch, drops a base hit in the center field. Rodriguez is two for two. Well, he got a fastball that he pulled for a base hit. This time it got jammed, but very strong. And even though Sir Kemp made the mistake in his first at bat, trying to go inside, did not get it in where he wanted it this time. He did, but Alex Rodriguez still able to take the ball to straightaway center field. Outside to Brian McCann. Short lead for A Rod. I remember when Brian McCann played for the the Braves, and correct me if I'm wrong, he had a nice beard. Thank you. Because he's clean shaven on the head, but when he signed with the Yankees. He decided to shave it because there's no facial hair allowed for the Yankees, but five year contract for a lot of money, it's worth it. He'll grow the beard later. Another Brian named Wilson told his agent, don't even call the Yankees yeah. because I'm not shaving. <laughs> yeah, I'm not taking that thing off. I wonder if he still has it. <laughs> Who knows what he has? <laughs> he had a lot of things going facially. One and two. Rod steps back to first. I think it was last year the Yankees, a bunch of the players, they decided they're going to grow mustaches. It's all they can grow for Yankees, just mustaches. And that lasted for a nice winning streak and everybody shaved. McCann pokes one towards center. Burns was shaded into right center a little bit. So one out for Aaron Hicks. Still had pull on his mind. There's the look. Not afraid to take off the helmet and Didn't have to worry about a hair dryer for sure, but that's that's a good look. Just let it go. But it's made, I think Kite didn't go back to the early 70s when he kind of started the rule. It's been a long time that yeah. you've not been able to have facial hair for the Yankees. And an era where after Charlie had the players in 72 and said they could grow mustaches. And all kinds of different looks started appearing in baseball. But the Yankees have always stayed the same. Oh, and one to Aaron Hicks. I mentioned the Yankees did not sign any free agents. They made three trades in the offseason. Hicks was one of them. Coming over from the Twins. Starlin Castro coming yep. over from the Cubs, which is a big trade. And then, of course, Araldis Chapman. Chapman not playing just yet. Valencia, second, and they'll get the out there. So Rodriguez is off the bases. Hicks is aboard on a fielder's choice. Chase Headley. We think of Starlin Castro. I mean, he for a long time with the Cubs, shortstop, then Addison Russell took over. They signed Ben Zobris to play second, and Starlin Castro was traded. I wouldn't be surprised if Starlin Castro ends up being a better player here than he was in Chicago. He was a pretty good player in Chicago, but seemed like it was kind of what Castro's not doing as opposed to what he is doing and he made some mistakes yeah. there was times where he was a little lackadaisical and a talented young man he was not without fault there at times yeah. and probably the expectations being exactly. young and 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 they were they were never really a good team until the last right. uh, last year 
But you think about the cities in America and baseball. You think of Chicago, big city, two teams, New York, of course, and he's playing in both. So maybe what he learned in Chicago will help him here. That's right. For Eric Surkamp, and we noted it in our open about he had not pitched out of the fifth inning, got through the fifth inning, his first two starts. Here he is, the fourth, and making his third start, first ever against the Yankees. This would be a great time to, as you said, to save the bullpen of this long stretch of games because the bullpen has been outstanding, but it's kind of necessary for the starting pitchers to go as deep as possible to save the good bullpen for times when they're trying to put teams away. Old foul. A's next off day will be Thursday, May 5th, and that will be a travel day. So 16 consecutive days the A's will play. You know, baseball is the only sport of the major sports that plays as many games as they do. And has fewer off days than anybody, but it's almost required to play every day to keep timing. Yep. Whereas the other sports, I mean, it's amazing that football once a week, hockey, and the basketball schedule half the games. And yeah. that's a swing and a miss by Headley. And again, a leadoff single, but Sir Camp keeps it right there, and the Yankees do not score. Fifth inning coming up at Yankee Stadium. One more game. One live streaming sports service delivers everything you have come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. Includes a free subscription to AtBat Premium, number one app for live baseball, blackout, and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. What 4 0 for each team, top of the fifth inning. Simeon Burns in, Chris Coughlin for the A's. Simeon had an RBI single in the second. Did it on a 3-0 pitch. A lot of scouts said, uh, okay, for future, 3-0 on Marcus Simeon, you got to be concerned he might be swinging a bat. You know, Ron Washington has been talking a lot, working a lot with Marcus Simeon, and one of the things he has told him, separate the two, and I think kind of you said, we saw in spring training, and I think you brought it up that maybe his defense was affecting him a little bit offensively, but that has changed completely. Yep. The four home runs and and the swing that he put on a 3-0 fastball, and he is playing very well defensively. And what he did to drive in the first run with two outs on a 3-0 fastball right down the middle, controlled swing. He didn't try to hit it in the seats. 
Just knew he gets a base hit and he drives home the time run and he did it to perfection. Hooked it down on the corner and giving Gardner no chance to throw out the base runner. But I think at such an important position as shortstop you have to separate the two offense and defense and he's done a tremendous job doing it. Lead off man Burns takes a strike. Fly ball to right. Ground out to first for Burns. We do not want to jinx Billy Burns. <laughs> I would never do that. He's not going to do it. But he has not struck out this no. year. No, he's not. But the, he's seen two pitches in this at bat. He saw first two, two pitches in the first two at bats. Now that see that time he could have swung and missed, and maybe ended up on second, on the slider in the dirt. <laughs> He's made 37 plate appearances without striking out. The count is one and two. And I just hope he doesn't strike <laughs> out because I'm going to feel bad. Uh, he's he's always aggressive but he's taken two pretty good sliders that hitters have been swinging at. Most with percentage in the majors. John Jason in that list. We know he's a good hitter. There's a shot toward right, and it's going to be over Beltran's head. He picks it up near the wall, burns round second. He's digging for third, and he will make it standing up with a one out triple. Thank you, Billy Burns, for not striking <laughs> out. I would have felt bad. Well, he got to three and two, and McCann had to be thinking, I don't want to walk him and have to try to throw him out if he tries to steal. So it throws a fastball down the middle, and Beltran, no chance. It hit softly and once Billy Burns hit it over the head of Beltron you're looking at three easily and what the triple on Sunday was his first of the year and he's got another one in the game after the off day yesterday and a stand up triple as was the case Sunday. Let's see if he can score the go ahead run again. And the infield comes in for Coglin who has struck out and single. And pitch him away again with a fastball let him go to left field with it. Nasty pitch there. 86 mile an hour changeup. These are times when there are there's one out that a, that a manager might give the sign going contact, even though the infield's in. And of course, it puts a lot of pressure on the infield because of the speed of Billy Burns. But we'll see what Bob Melvin decides to do. But the key is you get down the line. He's got this third baseman way off the line. Through it again. Wow. Same changeup. Coglin swinging at the the motion of Pineda and he's pulled the string perfectly twice. And these are times as a hitter you say the hard slider that he's trying to get you chase he won't throw it as much because there is a runner at third base. And he did throw it but it was sort of a sweeping yeah. slider that came in on Coglin. It's hard for him to throw the hard biting one depending on his catcher to block it but that stayed up and Coglin at least fouled it but like you said more of a a slider type instead of the hard biting slider that goes down this one just slid across. Anyone around. So he did not throw the slider in the dirt no. but that one sharp breaking pitch running in on Coglin. He just could not hold up and it was well off the plate. But when he saw it it was in the middle and that's how sharply it broke but he did leave it up no chance to have the wild pitch although even with Reddick he's going to have to do the same thing because even though it's two outs now he still has a runner at third. 80 pitches to four and two thirds for Michael Pineda. Good pitch there to Reddick, 93 on the corner. Walk and a fly ball to center field for Reddick. He was two for nine in the series against Kansas City. 
They had a homer, a double, and he knocked in four. Drives this one to right. Beltran is there. He's got it. So Pineda works his way out of the jam. Burns is stranded at third. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It'll be Gregorius, Gardner, and Castro. Ace Baseball in CSN California is brought to you by T-Mobile. Get major league coverage. T-Mobile has doubled its 4G LTE in the last year. So 1-1 one, one game, bottom of the fifth from Yankee Stadium. Gregorius will lead things off. The ninth place hitter against Eric Surkamp. Surkamp. One walk, three strikeouts. He's allowed four hits. And just through pitch number 65, so he's done a good job so far. But his first two starts going four and a third against Seattle, and then four and two thirds against Los Angeles. He de desperately wants to get through this <laughs> inning, and, and, and more than this, but one step at a time, get through the fifth. But he had his first ground ball out last inning when Valencia forced the runner at second. But he's been a fly ball pitcher tonight. And some wild swings by Yankee hitters. Gregorius hit a fly ball to left field in the second inning. Second year here in New York. Not an easy task for Didi Gregorius taking over for that that Derek Jeter guy. But he's actually done a very good job. 265 last year. Knocked in 56 runs in 155 games. Sounds like Ray, the Yankees are very pleased with. Gregorius, young shortstops, Castro, yeah. young second baseman, thinking these two guys could be together for a while. Shoots that one into center field. Somehow got through Simeon Doe for it under Sir Camp's glove. So the leadoff single here in the bottom of the fifth. We always see stars in the seats at Yankee Stadium. Larry David's got good seats. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, you create that show, you can sit anywhere yeah, and do you, anything you, you want. Ain't that the truth? Plus, you kind of like, like if if something's really annoying you and you just can't let it go, <laughs> and instead of letting it go, you have to say something about it. Well, that's 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 being Larry David. <laughs> right. So it's great. This 
just, you know, it's annoying. I, I have to say something. <laughs> I, I can't just let it go. He may be doing that right now. I just like to know whose seat he's sitting in. <laughs> unless, unless he decided, well, I'll just buy a season ticket. Or you just call the Yankees. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I created Seinfeld. <laughs> Can I get a seat in the first row? <laughs> George Costanza worked for the Yankees, <laughs> yes, of course. Right. He was the assistant to the traveling secretary. George managed to work for the Yankees for quite a while and never really did anything. And when the boss was alive and you could say that, then you're saying something. <laughs> That's right. Oh, the he, boss and go, how he'd go visit George once in a while. Yeah. Listen, the changes <laughs> the Yankees since the boss passed away, it's it's unbelievable. I just have to wonder his family took over, but just so many different changes. Almost the point you wonder if they're going to keep him. I mean, you talk about value of a of an organization, a franchise, tops in baseball. Yeah, owning a baseball team has become a really good investment the last exactly. 20 years. I want to say the boss paid about 11 million for it when he bought it back in the 70s. And for you find guys who played with the Cleveland Indians, he was very close to buying the Indians. Matter of fact, I mean, he was closer to them buying the oh. Yank Indians than he was the Yankees. No question. Shipbuilder out of out of Cleveland. And then somebody who is it? Somebody wouldn't sell it to him. Shock. <laughs> Just <donor>. think. <laughs> I don't think it would have worked the same as it worked in Probably New York, not. though. But it would have been better, I gotta believe. Oh yes, yeah. But he really wanted to buy the That's Indians right. and tried That's right. very hard to do that. Well, I know uh, Vernon Stouffer owned the club, and then uh, I know there was a kind of a, a group yeah. that Nick Maletti was a part of, yeah. and uh, a lot of different ones until. Uh, The, the, the more recent ownership, I guess you could say. Check swing, no swing. But I think Steinbrenner wanted to buy the Indians, and then when he couldn't, he just shifted gears and yeah. bought the Yankees. Full count, so a big pitch here with power hitters lurking in this Yankees lineup. Gardner doubled in the third. Yeah. And it picked off. Throw. Now there's going to be a rundown. That is going to. Oh, no. Well, they said he ran out of the baseline yeah. to avoid yeah. the tag, yeah, so Gregorius is called out. He was able to avoid that Alonzo tag, but by doing so, he <laughs> moved out of the baseline, which you create your You'll own baseline. Create it. Yeah, it's just a matter of how far he went out. I don't know. That may be questionable because I don't know he went that far, to be honest. They're going to. He avoided the tag and then back. Yeah, it was not. It was not a. One of those boy. He's clearly yeah. out of the baseline. He just jumped right. back. And you know he has to hope that this is overturned because. The last thing you want to do, and it's going to stand. The last thing you want to do. On three and two is to leave too early. Yeah, that's right. Because it's not a stolen base; it's to avoid a double play, and great call from the bench because those come from the bench. And Sir Camp had thrown over a few times, and that's where he was. And huh. oh. Oh my. And oh, Stephen wow. Vogt was ready to throw it to third. Everybody wow. was ready to throw it around the horn. And Laz Diaz called it a ball. And he's hearing it from the dugout. Laz and he Diaz should. pointed toward the dugout. Kind of Heights-wise, it was there. The only thing, this is going to come around the plate a little bit, but that seemed to be, I mean, where Stephen Vogt caught it, it's definitely a strike. And the only thing had to be, it would have maybe come around the plate where Vogt caught it behind, but 
Still too good of a pitch to take it full Gardner with the slider. Castro swings and misses. Castro has lined out. And popped out. The trade for Starlin Castro with the Cubs happened in December. And to get him, the Yankees gave the Cubs Adam Warren, who's a, oh. a very valuable right. bullpen guy for the. So it was not a. And Castro's got a big long term contract, but it was by no means a giveaway. Adam Warren was very valuable for the Yankees. Starter, reliever. And that one is drilled into the left field corner. One hops the wall. It's picked up by Coglin, and Gardner's going to be held. So Coglin got a nice bounce. He played it well. So Castro with a double, second and third, one out. And again, a very aggressive swing by Castro and got a fastball. Could not. Hit it so hard to hook it in the foul territory. Saw him earlier when he popped up a ball on the changeup, trying to pull. Gardner knew it was going to be fair, could not be caught, but ball did bounce back nice to the Coglin. Gardner was not able to be sent. So here's Beltran with the infield in. First pitch is bounced foul. But you get a break when you pick off an aggressive base runner. You think you have strike three on the next batter. You end up walking him, and now you get a double. Second and third infield has to play in. Reddick backs up. It's going to be deep enough. Gardner tags. He will hustle in, and Castro goes to third. So sacrifice fly by Carlos Beltran gives the Yankees the two to one lead. And that was a perfect pitch to do exactly what Beltran did. Pitch was up a little bit away and unlike the previous event when he tried to pull and was fooled on the pitch that was up and he knows he's a veteran just a sack fly get the runner in. And gets the job done. Eighth RBI for Beltran. Two outs now for Teixeira. Teixeira with a walk and a strikeout. So three and zero, oh, and be careful here. Don't lay it in there. Fastball in. Out over the plate for strike at 89 miles an hour. I guess he only swings three and zero oh from the left side. Maybe because we saw him hit a home run a couple years ago from the left side on three and zero oh and. It did not take long to get in the right field seats. That one runs off the plate inside, and it's a walk. So three walks now for Sir Cam. Something about the fifth inning, huh? Yeah. Visit from Kurt Young coming up. Come to the new, uh, not, the, not the new parks, but the parks in general. And as soon as a pitching coach goes to the mound, you start looking around. Where's the 30-second clock? I found it. I it's did too. Way out <laughs> in left field by the billboard. Yeah, right? and it's down to four, and there it is. And a visit from Laz Diaz. Enough time for somebody says you blew a call, Laz. Started all this mess, but it was inserted. The clock was in left field. They use the same clock for between innings as well. Yeah, I yeah so. okay. I don't see any other ones. 
Those are 20 seconds shorter as well this year. That's right. From That's 225 right. to 205. Here's Alex Rodriguez. Alonzo. Now back pedals. Back on the dirt. He's got it. Side retired. A run on two hits and a couple of walks for the Yankees. Sixth inning coming up from New York. It's now the Yankees two and the A's one. What's better than taking your family to the ballpark on a Friday night? With the Friday family pack, you can get four plaza level tickets, four Coliseum hot dogs, four medium sodas, four bags of peanuts, and it's just $60 at every Friday home game. Buy now at athletics.com slash family pack. Subject to availability. Get a while before the A's are back, but they will soon. And that will be against the Astros a week from Friday. And I would think the Astros, with all the rain in Houston, we hope they are doing well, but man, that's scary to see yeah, all the rain that the Houston area is getting all in the south. West in there in Texas. And what 18 inches? That's a lot of rain. In a hurry, too. They're playing baseball down in Texas tonight. Not in Houston, though, but in Arlington. The Astros and the Rangers are squaring off for the first time this year. It's the first of a three game series. And the Astros have to be happy because I heard the news today that the mayor of Houston said stay at home. And I think there have been games postponed at the Astrodome whenever they were there. Because of flooding, sure. Because it was dangerous for the people to go to the games, and that would have been the case if oh, they were definitely. playing in Houston. Definitely. So we wish those people in the Houston area the best during these very difficult times of the rain. Those are the, those are the top two teams in the AL West last mm -hmm. year, and they got a little rivalry going now, playing in the same division. Are the Rangers still in the division? Yes, they are. <laughs> Texas leading Houston three to two in the second inning. So a bunch of runs scored early in that game. That one's driven left center field and nobody's going to get it. I don't think it kicks away from Gardner and rolls toward the center field wall. Valencia is going to head to third and he's going to make it. So give Valencia a triple leading off the sixth inning. Well Gardner covered a lot of ground but it, whenever he went after with a dive. The one two trying to go inside left the pitch too much for Valencia as he opened up and I agree with you it looked like it's going to go to the wall but all of a sudden here comes Gardner but watch as he hits the ball and it kicks off of his body and going over to back him up was Hicks so that created a situation that Valencia could run and run and run and he could not recover quickly enough to hold Valencia to at least second and a stutter step a little bit as he approached the bag but made it easily so here's the gift run Kite. Infield back. Runner third. Nobody out. Put the ball in play. Ace and tie. First pitch to vote. There's that changeup. So second triple in the game for the A's. Burns is game with one out in the fifth. He's going to not get him home. They got to get Valencia home. You know 
what will happen too, Ray. If, if Vote doesn't get the job right. done, then the infield's going to come in. That's exactly right. This is the one chance. This is the, the guy. The yeah. one opportunity. Hit it to anybody except the pitcher, third baseman, maybe at third. Valencia wouldn't, but any place else on the infield or deep enough in the air, it's a run. But Ada got out of a big jam last inning after the one-out triple. Setting up inside, and vote just got a piece. Of it. Well, Pineda's got to be he's tough at that anyways, but when you're down 0-2. That's probably a pitch that even though Stephen Vogt fouled off his foot, he's happy <laughs> because otherwise he was not going to be able to make any kind of a contact to drive the ball. Pitch that was running off the plate. Yeah, the hard slider inside Vogt got it his first at bat, struck out. Coglin with a run at third, one out. Change up, change up, slider, slider. Well, McCann knows the ball has to be elevated if it is a slider. It's still a pretty tough pitch on the lefties. Got him. So a huge strikeout. Number six for Pineda. Oof. Right, just a nasty slider again. So Jed Lowry, and as you expected and it's true infield does come in which can help Lowry we'll see if it does with the infield in he usually tries to hit the ball to the opposite field in these situations and he does in the right field so he pulled it and he got it through that drawn in infield I think it was going to be a hit whether the infields in or not the A's will take it Lowry ties the game at two with the RBI single Hey, Jed Lowry is such a good hitter when it comes to driving in runs. And the target was away off speed, came towards the middle of the plate, and with the infield drawn in, perfect for Lowry to find the hole between first and second and tie the game. RBI number nine for Lowry. Seven for ten with runners in scoring position this yeah. year. Incredible. So the A's had the right man up, and he came through. And here's Chris Davis. Davis pulls off and boy, he's really been pulling off and he's he's a pull hitter anyways yes. but it looks like he's pulling off even more but during spring training the one thing we kept hearing was he can use the whole field he'll drive the ball out to right field we have not seen We've that not at all. seen it No, everything has been hips open pull and as mentioned earlier once you see this look where McCann goes stake is in but if if you are pull conscious Pitcher's going to live outside. They're going to live away, away, away. And Barbado starts to throw. But Ray, even if you're, even if the ball's down the middle, if you're pulling off, that'll hurt you if yeah. the ball's down the middle too. Exactly. And we've seen some pitches, for Chris Davis lately that have been good pitches to hit, and he just has not been able to to drive it anywhere. And it's got to be frustrating for him. He had a lot of success last year, 27 home runs with the Brewers, and comes to a new team with the expectations, as we talked about with Castro, another National Leaguer. But it's it is different. But he starts to pull the trigger on this backup slider, didn't, but called a strike anyway, and that's when you know that it's tough, just because everything that happens seems to go against you. And then you had to know that Pineda was going to come with that hard slider. That was a good one. So Davis strikes out for the second time. I mean, that's a, just a well placed yeah. two strike slider. And if you open up as he does and he did. Watch the hips hips open pitches away. And so when that happens you just fly and you're. You almost want to go to the plate and close off and hit everything up the middle to right field. Two outs for Alonzo. A's have tied it here in the sixth. Valencia's triple, Lowry's one out single. Make sure everybody's okay down there. We don't want anybody from the great <laughs> New York crew to get injured. We love these guys here. 
<laughs> Some of them. <laughs> good group. They do a good job. Gardner's under it. He's got it. Side retired. So a run on two hits for the ace Lowry with the RBI single. Bottom of the six coming up. We got a new ball game tied at two. Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Toyota, the full line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. Two seven and zero for the A's. Two six and zero for the Yankees. Bottom of the sixth inning. Eric Sirkin. Through five, three walks, three strikeouts. And he'll face McCann, Hicks, and Headley. Uncharted territory for Eric Surkamp. Yep, and his bullpen is quiet. Yeah. He's actually throwing the ball pretty well. Usually, if you face the Yankees, you want to start as many lefties as possible. And Rich Hill, I think, is going to start the series finale. So that will help because typically the Yankees have a lot of power left handers. Try to negate the power a little bit with a lefty pitcher, and that's what Sir Camp has done tonight so far. You know, right? Listen, we talked a lot in the early going about the A starters need to pitch a little bit deeper in the games. Yeah. It's actually it's been an issue for the Yankees as well. Mm -hmm. This is the 12th game of this year for the Yankees. The first 11 games, the Yankees have had a starter go seven innings just one time. Wow. And that's not very good. The A's through their first 13 games. Have had a starter go seven innings three times. Chris Bassett has done it twice yeah. and Sonny Gray once. So the Yankees are in search of starter innings, very much yeah. like the A's are. And you have to wonder if Joe Girardi, if that's uh, Shreve, Jason Shreve, is loosening the lefty, but because I know Bob Melvin had talked about it, the press, and I'm sure when he talks to the press, is Joe Girardi, they talk to the players first. And it may be in conversation with the starters. Hey, you, you have to pitch yep. deeper, and, and maybe you're going to stay in games that normally you would be coming out, but because of wearing down of the bullpen, CC Sabathia, Vallejo's own CC, will not pitch in this series. So I mean, it's uh, starters always want to go deep in a game. CC, and you can see the numbers for him for this season there was question of whether it's going to be here Nova in the rotation for the fifth fifth spot in the rotation at one time number one starter for the Yankees three and one now to Aaron Hicks Tanaka has been good yes he has but the other starters just so so again we're talking the very early part of the season and the starters ERA is over five the relievers that group's going to be special all year. Shot into the glove of a diving Valencia on the backhand. What a play, saved a double. 
Hicks turned on a fastball, got the 3 1 count in his favor. The leg left, a big swing, and Danny Valencia into foul territory just threw his body to the right. I thought it was interesting out working with Ron Washington today, and that ball hooking away. That's a sure double at least down the line. And Valencia extending as far as he could to the right, picked it up. You know, Ray, sometimes they talk about your first step, and watch what Valencia does right before the pitch. He yep. took a step and a half yep. to his right yep. before the pitch, and if he doesn't do that, he doesn't make the play. So it wasn't even his first step, it was what he did right before the pitch yep. was released. So he may have seen the sign That's, and said, hey, yep. you know what? Well, or he, the location he probably or, saw the 3 1 watch, count. One, two, yeah, two. But but the three one count he's seen the aggressiveness of these right handed hitters and he may have said he, this guy's going to be jumping on a fastball. But when Sparky Lyle pitched Greg Nettles played third. Of course Sparky lived with the slider. Look at that right through. So Headley somehow found the hole with the shift. But you can see Greg looking in to Thurman Munson getting the slider and he would take steps towards the line anticipating what we saw Valencia do. They Headley at three to the left side, and surprisingly, the ball got through. And remember, Headley did not have a stolen base all of last season. So maybe Stephen Vogt talking to him, him being surf camp about be careful with Headley, even with Gregorius, Gregorius the hitter. Lefty Sepchinski getting ready. Emo, Emo gets the call, and points through the plexiglass, and said, "You, yeah. let's go." 97 pitches for Surkamp trying to get through the sixth. Pitches by inning breakdown. First inning he had 25. After that he's been pretty good. Fifth inning a little high. Valencia another nice play he'll go to second and the throws a little bit high and Lowry did not quite handle it his foot was going to be off the bag and Gregorius will be a board. that's too bad Valencia made a very nice play and really the only play was to go to second but he went to his knees and then as he threw his knees kind of brought him up a little bit and brought the throw up high as well and it's too bad because Looks like Bob Melvin's going to the bullpen to get Sipchinski. And good job by Sir Kent, but Air five. Wow, it makes a diving play and gets an air when he throws a second. So when it's time for change, the Expedia oil change and auto service, your oil change, tune up and smog expert. Sipchinski coming in. Fans, you can rock out with your very own Sean Doolittle Metallica Gnome with sound. Presented by Ross. 15,000 fans at the Saturday, April 30th game. That'll be against Houston. 
we we'll receive this one of a kind giveaway that actually plays the A's closers walkout song. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash tickets or by calling 877-493-BALL. And we know that whole crew is going to be standing in line early as anybody oh, because if they're doing that when Doolittle comes in, they're definitely going to get his bobblehead. Sir Camp, a very good job and too bad he could not have completed the sixth. Excellent play a couple of times by Valencia. Sir Camp actually were told that Valencia was given an error as he made the diving stop and threw to second, threw it high, and if you're given an error, so Sipskinski comes on to try to get the A's back in the dugout. Now he's done a good job. Those are the numbers you see. The numbers you don't see, Ray, he has stranded all six of his inherited runners. Yep. And that's what he needs to do right yeah. here. Always an important number for relief pitchers, especially the guys who generally come in in the middle of an inning. First pitch to Gardner scoots away from vote. He can't find it. And they're going to no. it goes into the dugout. So the runners have to stay. Headley made a huge turn. But the ball took such a big hop it bounced into the A's dugout. So the runners move up to second and third. Joe Girardi wants to just get a clear reading on this. Well, he's going to say with the ball going to the dugout how many bases. But you're only going to get the one. Stephen Vogt didn't know. So he goes back to play which is a good idea. Valencia went after the ball. And remember not as much foul territory here. As in most parks especially at the Coliseum and there's just a couple of walkways into the dugout. With the rail and once the ball went towards that side it went down into the dugout. So wild pitch now second and third. And the real problem with that it takes away a possibility of a, of a force out. Ninety nine pitches for Sir Camp a career high. Did a pretty good job. Yes he did. Yes he did. That's if he's trying to do the same thing. So two and one the count. Starlin Castro, a right-handed hitter, is in the on-deck circle. And Rodriguez. May be ready for Castro. And now it's three and one. And you get to this point, don't give in. Because Gardner is has been tough. He's got a double and a walk. And the walk ended up scoring a run, which gave the Yankees a lead, but maybe it wasn't a ball, but it was called a ball. Sifkinchi is a situational pitcher and these situations for him to get the lefty out. Gardner a light shot right into the glove of Alonzo and the side is retired. So a couple of runners stranded for the Yankees and we have reached the late innings. Seventh inning coming up. 2-2 two -two game.
brought to you by McDonald's. Since we're in the late innings, here's something to keep an eye on. The Yankee will put four relievers who have not allowed a run yet this season. We know all about Andrew Miller and Dylan Batansis, but what about Johnny Barbado and Jason Shreve? They have not allowed a run either. But it's those first two guys that you really want nothing to do with because they're not just getting people out right now. They're striking everybody out. And that's right. <laughs> it's 2 2 in the seventh, so you get the feeling you probably will see those guys. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up at Smog Expert. So here's Chase and Shreve. Good young left hander out of the bullpen. And he'll face Simeon, Burns, and Coglin here in the seventh inning. Of course, that Yankees bullpen will get Araldis Chapman back on the 9th of May. As he is currently serving the 30 game suspension. So a really good bullpen will get a whole lot better. And I honestly think, Ray, that the Yankees bullpen with those three guys. Normally you wouldn't say a bullpen could carry a team the whole season. I yeah, mean that's yeah. a that's a it's a, a real stretch. But no. in this case, I think that those three guys could come pretty close. They're it, so good. If they're spread out and yeah. you yeah, can't yeah, overwork them. You can, no, you, yeah. I mean that's saying if you get if you get Good work from your other yeah, oh yeah. two, three guys in the bullpen. And then you have those three guys. Yeah, no, absolutely. So good. Yeah. I, I think I think the Yankees bullpen could could carry the whole staff yeah. for a season. And they may have to get a starter somewhere along the line or kind of get a couple of their starters going. But it's a special, special group, especially when Chapman comes back. Oh here. yeah. One and two. Just a bit outside. So if he comes back on May 9th, the Yankees are in Oakland. Right. Well, a couple weeks later, right? That's right. The weekend no, of that's... May 20, 21, 22. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, yes. It's a four game series. It's a four game. Right. So big fireworks on the Friday night. Yeah, 19, 20, 21, and 22. So we'll see. Gregorius comes up throwing. What a play. Yeah. That's a play. Yeah. See an infield a fair amount to his right yeah. too. He's got a very strong arm. Derek Jeter had to make this play jump and throw but Gregorius just stops and throws a bullet. And Simeon with good speed but that's the backhand where he sets himself up to throw square himself up after making the play. Shreve appreciates it. One out for Burns who swings around to hit from the right side. First pitch strike. Burns is five for 12 as a right handed hitter this year. Rangers leading the Astros three to two in the third. That's Feldman and Holland pitching matchup there. Surprised at the Astros very early going in the season. Their pitching has struggled. Yeah. It's a bit of a surprise. I'm sure it'll. Get straightened out. That guy named Keiko. Yeah. He said his velocity is. How down. about that? Leave him alone. <laughs> it's only mid April. I mean, it's it's amazing how panic sets in, especially expectations for the Astros after last season. There it is. Good fastball, 93 miles an hour, and Burns. That's the first time. It almost looks like he was looking for something off speed. So indeed, he strikes out for the first time this year. Perfectly thrown fastball and Shreve has a good change up almost like a screwball that he throws outside and that might have been the pitch he was looking for when he got the fastball in. So Crisp is going to pinch hit for Coglin. Coco takes a bit low. Coco is so good last year as a pinch hitter. See his numbers on the season. The one home run won the game up in Seattle. The first road trip the A's 
took the only trip the three game sweep in Seattle. Well, went off Vincent to win the game. Is right behind the right field fence. It's the four train. Heading to Manhattan. <laughs> You're asking Bob. <laughs> no, I, 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 our stage manager Bob, I, I, I held up four <laughs> fingers like that's the four train, and he looked at me like he didn't know what I was doing. He like, said, "Four, four so train." You got to intentionally we walk it earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He thought we were walking it. <laughs> it's the four train. <laughs> the four does go to Manhattan. There you I go. know that. I prefer to take the bus though. <laughs> yeah. Bob thought you were the manager saying, oh, you're going yeah. to intentionally walk the guy, huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Eye test. I was giving him the eye test. <laughs> two and two the count. Good change up there. Kind of fades away from the right-handed hitter. White Sox leading the Angels 1-0 in the fourth inning. Shoemaker. And Latos, the matchup there. Matt Latos has pitched well in his first couple starts. That's 2 0 on the year. There's a shot. Gregorius, what a play in the backhand. Gets up, throws in time. So DD Gregorius puts on a show with the glove in the top of the seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch coming up. From Yankee Stadium, it's a 2-2 game. Advantage of one of the best ticket deals in town with Rapid Deal Days presented by Barnabas. Five dollar Rapid Deal Day tickets are still available for the May 3rd game against the Mariners, which is also a Chevy Free Parking Tuesday. Visit athletics.com slash Barton today to get your tickets now. It's the three train. It's a three train. <laughs> I'm holding up three fingers right there. That means it's the three train. But it's not Barnable. <laughs> The three and the four uh, train, just not Bart. There's only one Bart. Yeah, there's only one Bart. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and smog experts. John Axford comes in. So Subjinski got the job done. Wasn't easy as Gardner lined out with a couple of runners in scoring position, but he did the job. Well, what an inning Gregorius had. Didi went in the hole to throw out Marcus Simeon with a perfect throw, but even better than that on the 3 2, a shot by Coco Crisp. He went down to the ground, came up, and a bullet 
to get Coco. What a play by Didi Gregorius. Coco stays the game in left field, pinching for Coughlin. Remember last year as we started to say that Chris had a great end of the season pinch hitting and hit the ball hard this time, but made a nice play by Gregorius. The cap the bullpens or both teams are outstanding. We've seen the A's in the first 13 games that they have performed well. And John Axford following Sapczynski comes in and uh, trying to give his club a chance to score a rim, at least a run, win the ball game. And both teams had yesterday off, so that makes you believe that the bullpens are full strength. Uh -oh. That tells us right there that they are. He doesn't have to pitch tonight. No. I mean, he could just no. take the night off tomorrow. So Axford will face Castro, Beltran, and Teixeira if anybody were to get on Alex Rodriguez. Castro, a line out, a pop out, and a double. Axford's first pitch, breaking ball, drops low. Probably some familiarity between these two teams, or these two players. Axford and Castro both in the National League. And that, Axford probably one of the better relievers as far as being able to throw an assortment of pitches. But knowing that when in doubt, he's got the 95 heater that he could always feature. Yeah, Castro three for ten with the double and five strikeouts against Axford. So indeed they have seen each other before. Down and away. Indians beat the Mariners three to two in Cleveland. It's the first of a three game series. Carrasco beat Miley. Indians have pretty good starting staff. They sure do. And even with Kluber struggling a little bit, but they got plenty behind him. The Mariners, after winning two out of three here over the weekend, Go to Cleveland, get an off day yesterday, and Mariners lose tonight to the Tribe, three to two. Three and one, Axford is ready. The big right-hander deals, pumps a fastball in there. Castro a little late. <laughs> It's nice to have 96, 97 in your back pocket. Three and one hitters count, and he throws a 97. So he got a little bit extra in the tank that he threw. And Castro a little bit late on the pitch. Looper. So full count. Simeon has it, throws on the run, and they got Castro, and he may have swung at ball four. I think he did, but he's been so aggressive that he's done that a few times. A few Yankees have, but Marcus Simeon, that was a difficult play. You have the speed in Castro, you're charging a ball, and having to reach down all the while while charging it, make a good play, and on the run, make a strong throw to get a fast runner. Everything done perfectly by Marcus Simeon. Circle around to get a good angle towards first base. And released it quickly and made the strong throw. And how much better have we seen him get yep. every game? First pitch fastball, Axford, 96 miles an hour. <laughs> and it's a strike to Carlos Beltran, who's doubled and scored, fly to right, and had a sacrifice fly. Every day working, as Ron Washington said, I'm going to have an early workout. I know one guy's going to be there, and it will be Marcus Simeon. Valencia was out working with yeah. him today. 
And maybe just that extra work and that extra step that he took. Made a great play to his right. Taking a double away maybe from. One batter and the next one diving to his left so all over the infield on the left side. To share it to follow so the big hitters up for the. The Yanks. Shift is on for Beltran. Like that fastball was by him, 97. <laughs> it was by him. Good call because he started to swing, and while he was thinking about the right field short porch, that pitch was away. Smart pitch by Axford to make it on the outside corner with the extra giddy up on it. Oh, right wow. down the middle, 97 miles an hour. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Power arms, the A's, man, they have never had this. And you get through the middle part of the batting order, this power hitter thinking right field. And he just could not pull the trigger on a pitch right down the middle at 97. But that's what a good fastball can do. Think about trying to fool a guy with some sort of an off speed pitch when you've got that to be able to throw. It doesn't always guarantee they're going to hit it. To share a bounces one Lowry charges plenty of time and expert has a three up three down seventh inning we're moving to the eighth and it is a two, two game A's and Yanks. that make a difference visit cshcalifornia.com and hope the winner receives twenty thousand dollars for his or her school beautiful look at new york two to two game top of the eighth and when it's time for change think speedy oil change in auto service your oil change tune up and smog experts and the big fellas in dylan batansis his seventh appearance, six innings pitch, he's got 15 strikeouts. But there's more to the story than that. Just so you know, his last eight outs have been strikeouts. And he has struck out 14 of the last 15 hitters that he has faced. That is unbelievable. And this that, is the big leagues. This isn't little. <laughs> 14 out of the last 15 he has struck out. Wow. And he's a setup guy. <laughs> it's not <laughs> even. Yeah, did we tell you he's the eighth in? 
It's not even the closer. And actually, when Geraldo Chapman is eligible, and the A's will see actually the big three in Oakland because Matanzas might be pitching the seventh. Mm -hmm. In in tie games, it'd be like the it'd be like the Royals. There's Chapman suspension we've been talking about the 30 games that that he took. So you add Chapman in in Chapman's throws 100 miles an hour. Been an all-star four times. You drop him in that bullpen, and that's why it's maybe a once in a generation bullpen. And there's another strikeout and a curveball. First pitch, curveball for strike. Goes back door with a good hook, and you can think about his fastball that is thrown very hard, but it's his curveball and. Similar to what a lot of hitters have to think about the fastball to gear for that. The cap will take you back to July of last year when he threw a curveball to Brett Laurie in the 10th inning, leading off the inning, and hit a home run down the left field line on an 0-2 pitch. Well, he likes his breaking ball. Yeah, and he tried to throw it to Brett Laurie, and he hit the home run, lose the game four to three, and nobody could believe it. And he struck out the side when after giving up the home run. Ninety seven heater. He throws two pitches. Fastball and a curveball. Valencia tripled and scored in the sixth. There's a line drive and a base hit to right field. So Valencia on an 0 2 pitch, a 97 mile an hour fastball, and he signals to right. Well, he did not go to the curveball, maybe to the lefties, but fastball to Valencia left it towards the middle of the plate, coming in on him. And Danny, smart thing of just going to the right side. I'm always amazed the guy throws 97. You're going to play him to pull. What is, especially with two strikes, but they did, and Valencia beat it as he went to right field. So one out. Here's vote. A strike. See, I think he throws the curveball more to lefties just because it comes in to them, starts back door and into them. There you go. Curveball 55% of the time, fastball 45%. Has a, a serious downward. Yeah. Not really that slider look, it's more of a yeah. curveball look. Breaks almost straight down. Steven Vogt saw enough of the the breaking pitches from starting pitcher Pineda, especially the hard sliders down to the back foot. Hit hard, picked up, out at second, back to first, not in time. So Castro handled that hard shot from Vogt. Well, fortunately, it was deep enough in the hole, took a base hit away from Stephen Vogt, but it allowed at least Stephen to avoid being doubled up. And you always have to be concerned with the slides going into second base, and Valencia did it properly. So two outs now, and here's Lowry. He's got a couple of hits tonight. Two singles, a run scored, an RBI, and his one out was a line drive to the right fielder. So two and oh. A couple of good takes by Jed Lowry. I think a lot of teams are tempted to see somebody like Batanza say put him right in the closer row. But you look at the Lake Yankees history as long as, as we have actually watched it. Remember Mariano Rivera at one time set up John Wetland. And then Rivera moved into the, the closer row and everybody else tried to set up. Base hit by Lowry. 
at the 2 0 -oh count got the fastball and pulled it past the first baseman in between first and second but that's the count in bad location with the pitch thrown and with a shallow or at least a short right field portion right field are playing shallow it's tough to go first to third in this part. But, but Todd's eventually going to be the closer. Chapman is a free agent after this year. Andrew Miller signed for three, so this is his second. And it's just kind of letting the kid get experience of pitching late in the ball game. But I'd say the plan is for him to eventually close for the Yankees. What a great time for Chris Davis to come through with a base hit to right field. <laughs> Go at second, Lowry at first. Two away here in the eighth. It's a second sign, it's a curveball. There is that curve down and away. When a pitcher only has two pitches and the catcher goes through a series of signs, shakes off the first one, you got a 50% chance of guessing correctly if you're the batter. Tonsa stands six foot eight. Would hug a little bit. And watch his arm. He dropped his elbow, got under the ball. As a result, left it up and a hanger that, wow, I'd like to have seen that ball leave the yard as it did last exhibition game. That's one we can look back on because Chris Davis unloaded on one. So now Davis sitting at the count, two and one. Outfield straight away for Davis. Castro, the second baseman, shifted a little bit towards second. And now the count even at two and two. Looks like he's trying to get the breaking ball away from Davis, but he's hanging it. I mean, that's actually Chris Davis has had about four good pitches, a couple that he swung and, and fouled back. That could have been hit. The Yankees playing extremely shallow in the outfield, which is surprising for somebody who has the power that Davis has. Davis is 0 for 3. Fly ball to center field and a pair of strikeouts. Fastball 97 miles an hour and Davis swings through it, side retired. So the A's get a couple of hits. Strand 2, bottom of the eighth coming up. No for the Yankees. Sir Camp, five and two thirds. Pineda, six innings. Judd Lowry has had a big night. Three hits, three singles, an RBI. And a good ball game tonight. 2-2, two -two, bottom of the eighth inning. So when it's time for change, think speedy. 
oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and smog expert. So John Doolittle comes in. Axford goes one inning with a strikeout, and now Doolittle takes over. Well, you figure both Yankees and A's bullpens would be tested in this series, and indeed that is what is happening tonight. So Doolittle gets Rodriguez McCann and Hicks. Righty, lefty, righty. First pitch to Alex Rodriguez. He is a strike on the outside corner. There's Andrew Miller. Fastball up and away. Just a couple of at bats for Rodriguez against Doolittle. Swing and a miss. Alex Rodriguez, a little different setup where he has the bat laying on his shoulder, and as it's getting ready to be thrown, he takes it off his shoulder and could not catch up to the 95 fastball. Trying to stay inside, like you talked about, Kai, but let's see if he goes in again. Stephen Vogt, yes, he is, wants it up a little bit. Skied on the infield. Valencia is there and he's got it. a good fastball there and he wasn't necessarily in off the plate but middle in a little bit and he just could not quite get to it. How many power hitters have you seen? We talked about this before that they get a good fastball. They're usually great mistake hitters. Yeah. Big power home run hitters. Try to fool them with a mistake and they kill you. No but question. good fastball, and Alex Rodriguez put his best swing, went straight up after missing a 95. So good idea that Doolittle stayed with the fastball. Coco Crisp, a long run, but that ball will drift into the seats. McCann is hitless tonight. Strikeout and a pair of fly balls to center field. Lots of power. Stephen Vogt a quick chat with Sean Doolittle and important because McCann has been up three times before this at bat. Stephen Vogt has caught and been behind the plate on those three. Sean Doolittle way way out of left field and you cannot see a lot out there. So it's always important a lot of times to go with your catcher and especially he wants to have a chat. Because reliever comes in straight from the bullpen. Starting pitcher, of course, will start warming up. Catcher will catch him, go in the dugout, and they can talk, but it's not the same with a reliever. High and deep to center. Burns back with room. Now comes in a couple steps, two outs. So good swing there by McCann. And he was all over thinking fastball and that the difference of straightaway center see when he swung he dropped the bat he knew he didn't pull it and he knows how deep it is the center field he's been behind the plate seeing a lot of hitters try to go straight away it's hard to do but that's a different straight versus pulling it even to right center down the right field line four eights like five hundred eight straightaway center here so here is Aaron Hicks to the screen 0 and 1 but after Eric Hosmer hit the home run in Oakland off of Doolittle on the fastball straight away center I tell you this one sounded that it was going to be a lot better than what the result was Hicks one for 15 on the season. All fastballs so far from Doolittle. Hicks hit a line drive his last at bat. That was the ball that Valencia dove toward the line, grabbed it in the air. 1 1 pitch was a change up. See what he does on the 2 1 and what Hicks does after that change up. 
Simeon straightens up. Alonzo digs it out and Doolittle three up, three down, eighth inning. So we're moving to the ninth in New York. Hey, we get in-depth sports news for the Bay Area fan. Know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's all brought to you by Hyundai, and it's coming up tonight at 10.30, and it's going to be on our sister station, CSN Bay Area. This is what they're going to talk about. We'll have a full recap for this A's Yankees game. The Warriors get ready for game three in Houston on Thursday. Kevin Kirk looks ahead to the Shardis Kings game four. So all that is coming up tonight. Sportsnet Central. So here's Andrew Miller come in for appearance number six. He's pitched five innings. He's got 12 <laughs> strikeouts. And he's got a fastball and a curveball or a slider. And mid 90s with a fastball. There's your slider first pitch. He has struck out seven consecutive hitters. Coming off a 36 save season last year, his first with the Yankees. Jumps ahead of the pinch hitter Mark Canna. Mark Canna has not been playing a whole lot lately. So Mark get a bat because you're facing Miller. That's right. First pitch breaking ball. Fastball that he was trying to catch up to. And remember his first home run. It was the first hit by an athletics this year. So three pitches. <laughs> it is nasty. Canna strikes out. So A's hitters have now struck out 11 times tonight. And if you're not accustomed to pinch hitting and you have to deal with this. Slider fastball slider. So Matson and. Rodriguez loosening up Simeon takes a strike. And you have to think that. Matson would be held back. To try to close the game, which would mean if the A's don't take the lead, Fernando would come in. And you also had to think that Miller, like Matanzas, would be one inning. So, yeah, so I think they're saying let's use our two best yeah. and try to win it in nine innings. And if it doesn't happen, we're going to see a guy from Barbados, maybe. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Nice play by Gregorius. Throw the first, and they get Simeon. Heck of a play by Didi Gregorius. And Marcus hit it to somebody else because he made two very good plays against him. Looked like the ball was headed into center field, but Gregorius didn't even have to leave his feet. And to share a pretty good first baseman, keeping his foot on the bag with the throw taking him towards the right field side. 
pretty good. So here's Burns. The timeline for Andrew Miller, he was a very high draft pick. He was the sixth player taken by the Tigers in 06. He went to Florida in the Miguel Cabrera trade. That's right. Yeah. He just never put it together and then went to Boston. And the Red Sox moved him to the bullpen in 2012, and that's when it kicked in. Good years for the Red Sox. Orioles and now with the Yankees and he's very good as he has a very quick top of the night bottom of the night coming up in the two games. Live game video highlights, stat cast news, and more. Download MLB.com at that, the number one app for live baseball on your phone and tablet. Bottom of the ninth, Yankee Stadium. Two to two. What a game. A bullpen game. Yeah, both bullpens have been great so far. A's will use their fourth reliever tonight. It's Fernando Rodriguez. Good ERA to start the season of 1.13. Coming in as the visiting team, the Yankees have used their setup and their closer. We'll see if it goes the tenth. They already have somebody loosening up in the bullpen. If Fernando can get the A's back in the dugout. They still have Ryan Matson to try to close if the A's take the lead. And of course, that is always the difference. Visiting versus the home. Mark Canna stays in at first base. He'll guard the line against any possibility of a double. And there is the right-hander. I believe it's Kirby Yates. The A's hope we'll be seeing him in the 10th inning. Headley deleted off, followed by Gregorius and then Gardner here in the bottom of the ninth. The first pitch is right there for a strike. Headley is one for three. He had a base hit in the sixth. Slider in a good one. Johnny Barbado in the bullpen. I was wrong. It's not Yates. Just a little bit high. Well, I remember the Yankees had the pinstripes, no names on the back. Yeah, Johnny so, Barbado. So we, uh, he wouldn't turn around so we could see his number. Yeah, it's his fault. And we knew it wasn't Batanzas or Miller. <laughs> no, those guys. Another curve. So Headley. Stays alive. Count remains one and two. Kind okay, of, you know, in all seriousness, it's not like the Yankees of the past where you had guys that you knew that when they showed up, you knew who they were. Yep. But it, it's totally different now, and the changes. You know that guy, Alex Rodriguez, and the veterans on the club. A cue shot, and it rolls under the glove of a diving Simeon. 
the winning run is aboard with nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth. He didn't hit it very hard, but he just sported through the infield. It's right off the end of the bat. Yeah, that was a shading him to the right side, so Simeon had to go far to his right. So here's Gregorius. See if he's bunting. Valencia in at third, squares to bunt, and the pitch is high. Well, I'm sure what the A's talked about in their team meeting going over. The Yankees and thinking about Joe Girardi's team as being more of a running base stealing team. So you have to be concerned about the bunt, but also that some of the guys have the green light, like Chase Headley. But coming in hitting a buck 54, as Headley was on base tonight with a couple of hits, he's not had many opportunities with that batting average to steal bases, but he is doing more running this year. Maybe there's going to be a pinch runner. Something's happening with Laz Diaz looking at the dugout. Maybe. I think Ellsbury's yeah. grabbing a helmet. There yeah. he is. So Jacoby Ellsbury is going to run for Headley. Well, Headley, I mean, he runs okay. Ellsbury is very fast. Yeah. I would think Gregorius is still going to bunt. Yep. Bunts it in the air and pass Canna. That's a fair ball. It's a base hit to right field. <laughs> he punted it so hard. Right. I drive down the line. And see, this is not an attempt to sacrifice by Gregorius. And, and this is a situation, if you're a hitter, you're sacrificing yourself. It looked like he was trying to. Drag the ball, pull the ball for a base hit. So the A's might have caught a break at least for the first offering. That's great with his lead. And again, not a great. Bunt attempt by Gregorius. This puts the manager in a tough spot when you get to two strikes. This is a great pitch to bunt, but look at the angle of the bat, and the bat was behind the plate. I and mean, he just. That was not a great bunt. One sack bunt bunt this year. Had to be on a breaking ball. That was a good fastball from Fernando that just kind of snapped his bat at it. It's this one in the air. Shallow right and Reddick comes in. So an unproductive out by Gregorius. And that'll bring up Brett Gardner. And you wonder now, Ray, with okay, the, the bunt is now off. Right. And you have a terrific base dealer at first. Gardner sprays the ball around. I think this is a spot where if you're the A's, you have to be careful because you could get some action here from the Yankees. Well, Ellsbury wanted to get the time that Fernando's releasing the ball. But you'd have to think, and I agree with you, that you'd have to think the Yankees would like to have sacrificed Ellsbury to second, but since he was not sacrificed, that maybe he will try to steal his way. Stephen Vogt, while as he says, I do not have the strong arm, I try to get rid of it quickly. And that's a big plus for him. Fegley has more of a stronger arm throwing out base runners. But for Stephen Vogt, it's the quick footwork, getting rid of the ball as quickly as possible. That's 
Bradbury leaning just a little bit. And then timeout granted for Gardner. It was a fastball. Yep. <laughs> Starlin Castro is the on deck hitter after crash. Castro would be Beltran. Defense pretty straight away for Gardner. Gardner can hit the ball all around the diamond. Very steps off. Decent lead, not running, and the pitch is outside, one and one. Hey, Fernando's doing a good job. He's kind of holding him, and then when he releases, he's quick pitching. And with Fernando with a good fastball, he's not taking anything away from his his pitch when he does slide step and slide step quick pitch. Sometimes a pitcher will take a little bit, lose a little bit when he does that, but Fernando throws too well for that to happen. Step towards second, this like he may be taken off, and then he had to really scramble back. Yeah, you're right, and that's why Canna, even though the throw to his left pulled it back quickly, and now he's looking. I would think that it's more of a green light for him to instead of looking at third base coach yeah, for signs. Yeah, yeah, he's got. I mean, they paid him all this money and premium base deal. Exactly. There's a slide step and a good one. So Gardner goes around one and two. Quick throw to first and then the little slide step with a lot of fastball velocity on the inner part of the plate. Geez, that looked like the ball that Sir Camp threw it was called ball four. Yeah. <laughs> Rodriguez ahead in the count to a tough hitter. Ellsbury runs the pitch is high votes throw is in time they got him. Well there's your quick release. There's a great pick at second and a great tag by Marcus Simeon. He's doing it all tonight. Stephen vote. Why are you looking back Ellsbury going to be taken all the way and the pitch quick. Look at that. Put the leg down head first slide. And Stephen Vogt, what a great throw and a great pick at second by Marcus Simeon. He took it on a hand, but man, what a quick release by Stephen. And you don't have to make a perfect throw, just get it down there. Great, great job of catching the ball by Simeon. Got the short hop and made the tag. Stephen Vogt got a caught stealing and a big one. Had to figure he's going to be running soon. He got a pretty good pitch to throw, too, which was up in the strike zone. So three and two now. Yeah, Ellsbury, terrific base dealer, and it looked like he got a decent jump. He mm -hmm. did glance back. And a nice throw. And slide head first, he got a strawberry on his right elbow. 3 2 pitch, high fastball to the screen. Now Marcus Simeon, this is such a tough play, but Marcus Simeon put, you know, he put his left foot out almost like he's trying to block Ellsbury, but Ellsbury went around him, but he knew he was going to slide head first, and somehow Marcus, maybe when he tagged him hard and quick, flexed his wrist back a little bit. If you're a stolen base threat, why do you look back? You know, it's got to slow you down. And and he struck him out. Nice job by Fernando Rodriguez. And we got extra innings from New York. A's two. Yankees two.
Arm is a member of the Athletics in third start, pitching into the sixth inning, and a very good job. A lot of fly ball outs. Matter of fact, he had 11 in the game. But a great job by Eric Zerkamp to get a no decision as his ball club tied the game. And we're going to extra innings at the Athletics with a couple of runs on nine hits and one error. And the Yankees 2 8 and 0. Oh, and we are in extra innings. And it's Johnny Barbado, a young man who does throw hard out of the Yankees bullpen. This is Barbado, right? I think he's warming up. Yep. So the A's will see him for the first time. And he got through Batanza and Miller. See what they can do against someone they have not seen. Six innings. He has nine strikeouts. Good fastball, mid 90s. Curveball and a slider. And Chris to lead it off against Barbado. He shoots one to left field. That's Aaron Hicks who has moved from center to left. So one pitch, one out. We'll give you some of these changes in just a moment. Coco looked like he just tried to slap the ball and ended up hitting it deep enough for Hicks to catch it. So one pitch, one out for Johnny Barbado. And here's Reddick. First pitch. Good fastball, good velocity at 95. Barbado is 23 years old, 6'1, 235 pounder. That's Ryan Matson warming up for the A's. Barbado originally a Padre. Came over in a trade for Sean Kelly a couple years ago. So a big leaguer for the first time this year. Saw so Matson warming up, and I think that's just in case the A's take the lead because I think Fernando Rodriguez is going to be the long man for the A's. He's capable of doing that. Line drive into the glove. That's uh, Ronnie Torres. Headley, who was pinch run for, is out of the game. Ronald Torres. So two away, and now Valencia will hit. Valencia is two for four, a single, a triple, and a run score. Valencia's triple in the sixth inning led off the inning. And then Lowry singled him home, and that tied up the game, and that's where we are at now. Cap, I think there's so many replacements by Joe Girardi, the crew in right field doing the roll call again. They're starting <laughs> over. <laughs> Got to get the new guys in there, too. So there are the changes. Third base, Ronald Torres. Center field, Jacoby Ellsbury. And Hicks moves to left field. So Gardner's out. Headley's out. So more velocity out of this That's Yankees right. bullpen. And I know the Yankees are high on this young man, John Barbado. you behind in the count with Volt hopefully to follow. We're going to snap the ball back. He was one of the swing from Valencia on a slider curve ball moving away from the right hander. Target outside, comes inside, fair ball. Torres, no foul ball. Talking about guarding the line, he was on the line. <laughs> he was he was in foul territory. <laughs> yeah, he was. <laughs> he actually was. And watching Doug Eddings at third base, the umpire, and ball crossed, I mean, into foul territory, and Eddings' hands went up, indicating foul. And Torres. That's a step and a fall to the right and <laughs> foul territory and come up with the ball. So another 2 2 to Danny Valencia. 
And there's a wicked slider, and Valencia strikes out. So the Yankees' bullpen is good. The Yankees' bullpen has been good, and we're moving to the bottom of the 10. It's a 2 2 game. Look at the game summary started with Alex Rodriguez. This is a two out base hit. Fastball in on him. Did not get it in far enough, and that would score Beltron. The A's, though, came back on a 3 0 fastball hit nicely by Marcus Simeon. The A's also scored that run to tie it with two outs. And Beltron with a sack fly right field. That would plate the second run for the Yankees, give them the 2 1 lead. But very quickly, the A's would come back and do the same. Tie it on a base hit by Jed Lauer of the drawn in infield. That was after a triple. By Danny Valencia. And that's where we stand into the tenth inning, bottom of the tenth, two nine and one, two eight and oh for the Yankees. And he's trying to take it to the eleventh. And Ray, as you predicted, Fernando Rodriguez stays out there. Fifteen pitches in that ninth inning. And he faces Starlin Castro, Carlos Beltran, Mark Teixeira. So it's the heart of the order. For the Yankees here in the bottom of the 10th. Fernando Rodriguez, the type of pitcher that you like because he can give you some length, some innings, and trying to this point to do it. Simeon throws and Kenna holds on to the low throw. What a way. The Rangers leading the Astros 4 to 2 in the sixth inning. Arlington. Indians beat Seattle 3 2. White Sox leading the Angels 2 0 in the seventh inning. So more good pitching from the White Sox, and they've got it all year. Well, Matt Latos, they keep talking about his kid Fulmer, and he's the fifth starter Latos is, and he's saying, well, I'm, I can pitch too. And we saw it at the Coliseum when he pitched the final game of the four game series to start the season. Bounce back year for Matt Latos. Mm -hmm. One and one to Carlos Beltran, who has doubled, flied out, sacrificed fly, and a strikeout. One for three. Trying to 395 yeah. career home runs and trying to stay away from him also instead of giving him a chance to pull a ball. Rondo getting heated up. Over through that fastball. Fortunately, a little bit off the plate inside. The Beltran couldn't offer at it. So hitters count for Beltran. And now three and two. 
So a fastball that was away. Now you just do not want to take a chance. These guys know how to pull the ball. Beltron, such a veteran, a can, of course, signed with the Yankees. They wanted to sign him because of the short right field porch. Another high fastball and another foul ball just to our left. Second level. Fernando has enough on his fastball that for Beltron, again with the shift to the right side, if he if he does pull the ball, you're, you're fearful that it's going to be more in the air. And actually the fear of two, give him a base hit to left field with the shift to the right side on a good fastball away that both probably will stay out there with. And he went around on a 3-2 pitch that was out of the strike zone. It's nice to see aggressive hitters that when they have one thing on the mind, and that's to end the ball game with a walk-off. That they swing at a pitch instead of taking the walk, swing at a pitch with no chance and a check swing on top of it, which magnifies the difficulty of even trying to put the ball in play. So now with two outs, it's the dangerous mark to share. He owns 397 career home runs. A fastball taken for a strike. That's a great curve, good teaser pitch. Yeah. Jake John Sterling, of course, he of the many names. We do not want to hear and see a text message. No, we don't want text to send a text <laughs> message. <laughs> but that's John Sterling's call for Mark Teixeira. Mm. Pretty good pitch, yeah. but it's called the ball two and one. Well, Mark Teixeira right now is sitting dead red. Said fastball, two curveballs that have missed. Stephen Boat moves outside. And go inside. It's hot. So three and one. Alex Rodriguez is your on deck hitter. Canna backhand gets up, flips to first, and a nice play by Mark Canna. Flips to Rodriguez side retired. So we play on as we head to the 11th inning here at Yankee Stadium. Still tied 2 2. And each week as our A's insider Joe Stiglitz talks A's baseball with players, coaches, special guests, and much, much more. The A's 
Insider Podcast with Joe Stiglitz. It's on CSNCalifornia.com, also available on iTunes. Nice looking hats, jacket. Yeah. Front row here at Yankee Stadium at the at those good seats down there with all the food you want to eat. 31,952 is the attendance tonight for game one of this three game series. Hit hard, shift is on. He's taken care of way out there. <laughs> is that Torres? That was a third baseman. Wow. That's right. Now Torres is going to jog all the way across. He was in shallow right field. So Gregorius stayed at his shortstop spot. Castro just slid over, which actually that makes some sense because Castro was shortstop. Either way, Stephen Vogt is retired. So one out here in the 11. See, I don't. I mean, you look at your box score. Stephen Vogt hit a ball to the third baseman. He figured the third base was yeah. playing a normal third base. and said, you have to put down, he's playing a right field. So why not just give it to the second baseman, who that's his position, or right fielder? For or <laughs> just put it down <laughs> as a 4-3 simply because of that. Well, that's it, the four area. Exactly. Like yeah, I mean, but that's that's what makes it a little bit different. That's probably the way you and I would do it yeah. because <laughs> in our minds then we know where the ball went. Because when that hit there I said I put down four three and you said oh that's Toria. So yeah, I, well, I didn't know five, who three. it was either. I had to double check. Well they saw Dull yeah. and Matson so Matson up again but smart enough as a veteran reliever that he is loose. He knows he has plenty of time for the A score run. Instead Ryan Dull getting heated up to come into the game if the A's don't score. Lowry tried to hold up, couldn't do it. He does not agree with Laz Diaz. You be the judge. Yeah, first of all, is Laz Diaz making the call? Although it was a good one this time, still it would defer to the third base or first baseman, uh, umpires. A line drive down the right field line. It's going to roll into the corner. And Lowry's going to have a one out double. That is a four hit game for Jed Lowry. Three singles, a double, an RBI, and a run score so far. Watch him handle this curveball just like he did against Kelvin Herrera on Sunday. Set fastball, curveball, hooked it down the line. And once again, we're seeing. Jed Lowry and his ability to hit doubles. This one hooking down the line have been nice with the ball to curve past Beltran in right field. He could have made it to third, but instead he played the carom nicely. Did Beltran keep Bel Lowry at second? So another opportunity for Chris Davis. Johnny Barbado, his second inning of work. Barbados seems to be the type of pitcher that's max effort every pitch. Yeah. Everything is thrown with the same delivery. Of course, he throws a good breaking pitch. He's the fourth reliever of the night for the Yankees. Shreve, Patanzas, Miller, and now Barbado. Davis misses that one. Took a little off, 87. Bob Melvin is hoping for a run. Hoping for hope. Hoping for another one run victory is what he's hoping for. And here we have a tie game in the 11th inning. Close pitch. Two and one the count. I read today the A's were four and three in one run games. Did not win their fourth one run game last year to June. That's how bad of a season it was. And of course, a strong bullpen has helped them so far this season win those close games. Trying to win another one. Hard slider there by Barbado. 
two and two the count with Mark Canna waiting in the on deck sir. Fegley and Butler have not been used. In the A's bench. Which he's have Dustin Ackley and Austin Roma. Would you take a flare to right field. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so would Chris <laughs> David. Yeah. Castro trying to hold Lowry close at second. Roll to the shortstop. Gregorius scoops, throws in time, two outs. Jed Lowry getting the third base even with the ball in front of him. Gregorius taking the sure out. But Barbado likes to throw the hard curve and Ron McCann has had his work cut out for him tonight to try to block. Started with Pineda. Kansas. So Canna will try to give the A's the lead here in the 11th. Strike. A little bit of a late call. Canna pinch hit in the ninth inning, and that was against Andrew Miller. Struck out. Another slider. So the crowd or what's left of the 31,000 tonight starting to make some noise. It's been a very quiet crowd. Marquez's first home run only home run of the season came on a first pitch fastball from Rodon of the White Sox to right center field. A liner off the glove in the left field and the A's are going to take the lead on an 0 2 pitch. So Canna hit a low liner that Gregorius just could not come up with. And how about that? A's lead three to two. He's made some miracle plays tonight, but Canna smoked the ball, and you're right, got the ball stayed close to the ground. Got a fastball, and he just hit it so hard that it scooted close to the ground. Gregorius made some great plays tonight, could not come up with this one. And you have to wonder, Canna can run so well, even if he catches the ball laying out the way he did. Would he've had time to get up and throw him out at first base. But he didn't. And Barbado with the disappointed look on his face, but a great 0-2 swing. Oh, and Arcanis going to be caught off first. And he is called out. A nice play by the catcher there, Brian McCann. But Mark Canna comes up with a huge hit here in the top of the 11th, a two-out RBI single. So Matson's going to come in to try to save it. He's now leading three to two. and Bay Area will have highlights from this terrific game so far between the A's and the Yankees.
you ready for Game 3, Warriors and the Astros, and we'll get you ready for Game 4, Sharks and Kings. Clint Breed and Dave Feldman will host. So a good ball game tonight. The A's get a big hit in the top of the 11th. And now Ryan Madsen will try to save it for the A's as the Yankees come to bat in the bottom of the 11th. Rodriguez, McCann, and Hicks are the three scheduled hitters. Four saves for Matson. Can't forget about the job that Fernando Rodriguez just did. Two innings, one hit, couple of strikeouts. And that was an opposite field hit by Headley. Taken out for the pinch runner. And Stephen Vogt threw Ellsbury out, but a great job. Matson trying to finish the deal. First pitch. Rodriguez goes out of the strike zone and swings and misses. Two for four tonight for Rodriguez, couple of singles. He knocked in a run way back in the first inning. Now they're still trying to stay inside with him and got in there. Yes, he did. Good movement in. Now to pitch inside to a right hander, it's not as bad as if you try against a lefty with a short porch. A little bit more difficult to left field, left center. It is a big yard from the right center over to the left field foul line. Going to pitch dug out by vote. And I think as you described earlier about power hitters and as they age a little bit getting it on their hands makes it a little bit more difficult for them. And but when a pitcher sees a catcher move inside with a fastball, as he's doing again, just trying to put a little bit extra on it. Like that. Good pitch. Tied him up inside. One out here in the 11th. That's a nasty sinker. That's like a left handed throwing a slider down and in. Look at the, the movement on the pitch from Ryan Madsen. He's got the great change up and that sinker in on the hand. So he stayed in there and got the job done. Now you just have to go the opposite. You have to go outside with that good sinker to this, to this hitter, left handed hitter. With the changeup, Matson yeah. likes to throw that. When you get hitters who are geared for a fastball and they see the motion of Ryan Matson and then he pulls the string, instead of 95, it's 83. That's a huge difference. Again. Can swings at a couple of pitches out of the strike zone and he's behind in the count only two. It's the same pitch. He's got the same idea McCann does, but 83 and 85 mile an hour change us from Ryan Metz. That one cute foul and another changeup. Glad it would foul because <laughs> shortstop. Oh, that's a third baseman. Play it short. There's a lot of open territory on the left side. Hicks, switch hitter, waits in the on deck circle. Matson knocks it down, picks it up, flips to first two outs. Brian McCann, hold for five tonight. Well, you had the shortstop right there to take it, but Matson instinctively, as pitchers will do, reached up, knocked it down, threw it easily to first base, and got the second out. So one more to get as Aaron Hicks steps in. And the first pitch is low to Hicks. Hicks is 0 for 4. He did reach on a fielder's choice back in the fourth. Ellsbury in the on deck circle, hoping to get a chance to hit. Gamers. Take there by Hicks. Our night game tomorrow and again on Thursday. We'll have all three games for you here on CSN California. Out 
outside corner call hey. the strike. This with the 93 fastball came back with a 94 outside corner. Great paint. This should do it. Burns in and over. He's got it, and that's the ball game. So another very nice win by the Athletics as they start this long road trip off with the W and they get themselves back to the 500 mark with a 7-7 seven and seven record as they defeat the Yankees in extra innings. Took three hours and 30 minutes, 31,000.